audiobook titled Superman in Solo Leveling, 01-70, by Slimesage Part 02. This work belongs to author Slimesage. Source Scribble Hub and RoyalRoad.com With a determined look replacing her face, she raised her head and nodded in agreement. I agree. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 9. CH 36. Seeing that she finally agreed, the brightest fragment of brilliant light nodded at her while at the same time, receiving news from the shining fragment of brilliant light that Sung Il Huan agreed to the proposal and has became his vessel. Turning his head towards Kane. I'm afraid this is as far as we could talk, but before I go, I will remind you that you'll have an additional ally in a decade. Farewell, mortal. Having said that, the brightest fragment of brilliant light disappeared in a flash of light. Meanwhile, Kane could feel her growing strength especially. She has a feeling that she could extend her reach and move things with her mind. Deciding to try it, she extended her hand forward, and the boulder that is resting was lifted upward, while Kane tried to move it around and it did. A few seconds later, she felt a bit exhausted since not only is she exhausted from the battles earlier, but she directly used a skill that she just received without training in it. Guess I'll train late dash. Kane didn't manage to finish her sentence when the wall behind her was suddenly blasted away and a frowning Kenji walked inside and a sigh of relief came out of his mouth at seeing Kane alive. Seeing Kenji, Kane also sighs in relief, and finally... She felt embarrassed since she just went into an S-rank dungeon without informing her boyfriend. I'm sorry, I dash dot. When she was about to apologize, Kenji suddenly embraced her and lifted her. We'll talk about this later, but first, let's take you to a healer. Kenji said and before she knew it, they both blasted out of the ceiling, and while up in the air, Kane could see the whole island with its full beauty if it wasn't for the ants swarming it. Earlier, Kenji didn't finish the ants since his priority is Kane since he saw that she was injured when he used his x-ray to find her. Soon, they finally reached their home and at the front door is a worried Sheena and Hana while Chikashi was sagely nodding his head before giving Kenji a salute. Kenji decided to not visit the hospital for hunters instead, he went for his father since he is a healer a much more potent one. After landing, he first went inside the mansion and gently laid Kane on the couch, and finally, let his father do his job. Chikashi also went inside, while holding a glowing green grimoire and soon, Kane was enveloped in a green light before it wears off, revealing Kane without a scratch. Kenji thanked his father, while Shina immediately went to Kane's side and reprimanded her. Meanwhile, Kane just kept quiet since she felt that she deserved this since going inside a very dangerous dungeon alone that even S-rank hunters can't handle without allies is nothing but a death wish. It was then that Kane finally realized the dumb action that could cause her, her life, and probably even make her close one sad and Kenji might become depressed. While at the same time, she felt no regret coming alone since not only did she learn her lesson, but also because she received a power that is beyond her imagination. If she's gonna compare her strength from before and after, then she's ten times more stronger than her past self. If her speed before could outrun a jet, then her speed now could outrun a speeding bullet. While her strength also increased, but if compared to Hannah, then she falls quite a bit. After Sheena was done reprimanding her, it was Hannah's time to lecture her. After another five minutes of an earful, Hannah was finally done but it was then she noticed a familiar power inside her. When she squinted her eyes to take a close look, she was shocked by what she found and decided to talk with her husband about this. After Hannah, 
It was finally Kenji's time. Kane just looked at Kenji and saw Kenji gesturing for her to come with him back to their home. After saying their goodbyes and sagely advice from Chikashi to Kenji, Kenji flew away with Kane on his back. On their way back home, they both just kept quiet making Kane nervous. In an instant, they finally arrived back home. After gently landing, Kenji brought Kane to their bedroom and gently laid her down on the bed. Kane was both curious and afraid of what was happening. Curious, because she was curious on why Kenji had to bring her to their bedroom while she was afraid that Kenji might be mad at her. While she was deep thinking, Kenji unknowingly hugged her from behind, shocking her while at the same time making her blush furiously. No matter how many times they cuddle or hug, Kane was still embarrassed by this. Kenji, who was hugging her from behind, gently placed his face to her nape, taking a sniff of her scent. When Kane noticed what he was doing, it was already too late, then suddenly, a moan came out of her mouth. H&N Kane widened her eyes before using her hands to close her mouth while breathing heavily. She could also hear Kenji chuckling from her nape. Kane pouted and said, Aren't you supposed to be mad at me? Hearing what she said, Kenji just shook his head and said, I'm not mad, I'm just a bit disappointed that you didn't even inform me about what you just did. It's not like I'm gonna stop you. Kane just bowed her head in sadness, she didn't mean it to happen like this. When she first heard about the dungeon, she was determined to clear it and make her boyfriend proud. But instead, not only she was on the verge of death, but she also makes her boyfriend disappointed in her. I'm sorry I dash dot. When she was apologizing, Kenji's next word stops her. But I'm proud of you. If other hunters were in your situation, they'd lose hope and just left themselves there to rot, but you didn't. Instead, you overcome your fear and face the challenges head on. Kenji then caressed her hair while tears were falling from her eyes. She was happy, happy that her boyfriend was also proud of her. All she ever wanted was to be equal to Kenji. And now with her strength, she could probably do it. Not only that, but I could sense that you also get stronger. I don't know what happened there nor I'm gonna pry but at least promise me that you'll never do this again. Kenji was shocked when he sensed Kane's strength. Perhaps when they spar again, she could provide him a challenge. Kane nodded her head when she heard his words. She expected that Kenji will sooner notice her increased strength. Then a thought struck her. Maybe she could tell Kenji about her encounter with the rulers earlier. After all, the brightest fragment of brilliant light didn't say anything about not telling someone about her encounter. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. There will be lemon in CH 38 and 39. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 9. CH 37 Hesitating on whether she should tell him or not, it was then that she remembers that time when she got a tattoo, she didn't tell him about her decision. And then there is earlier when she once again didn't tell him that she was going in an s rank dungeon. And now she's about to repeat the same mistake, so this time, she decided to tell him the truth about earlier. Kenchan. I have to tell you something, will you listen? Kane said while they were cuddling on the bed. Kenji just nodded at her and said, Sure, what is it? Kenji asks. Kane then told him about what happened earlier about his meeting with the rulers, about the proposal in exchange for being a vessel, and finally, her mission of eliminating the shadow and star monarch. Kenji just kept quiet and listened to her story. After telling him about what happened earlier, Kane noticed Kenji's calm expression and pouted. You don't believe me, do you? 
Kenji chuckled and was about to tell her that he believes her when Kane suddenly stands up and told him. If you don't believe me, I'll show you. After that, Kane brought her hand forward and Kenji felt someone lifting him without physical touch. Kenji didn't resist and slowly floated out of the bed while Kane was looking at him like a puppy waiting for his praise. Kenji mentally chuckled at her cuteness then resisted her control and slowly floated towards her before patting her head. This is a nice power, Kane-chan. Kenji purely smiled at her while Kane was blushing at being patted by him. Of course, I believe you. After all, I already knew about the rulers and monarchs. When Kenji said that Kane stopped blushing and deadpanned and stared at Kenji as if saying, Really? And you didn't tell me? Kenji felt like laughing at seeing her reaction, while Kane could see Kenji holding his laugh, so she pouted again and punched his broad chest. Wait. Since you know it already, when did you learn it? And where? Kane seems to realize something and asked. Well, it was during Kamish's rampage last year. And it was father who told me about it. Huh? It was Takashi-san? Does your mother also know about it? Kenji nodded at her words, while Kane felt left out since she was the last one to know about monarchs and rulers. Kenji, seeing that Kane was down, patted her head and said, Don't be so down. How about I cook you something? You must be hungry, right? Kane's depression immediately faded away and nodded at his words. Kenji's cooking is top-notch, unknown to her. It was only good for her because the one who cooks is her beloved. In truth, his cooking is just above average since he just started learning cooking the day they became a couple. Kenji chuckled at her reaction and went down to the kitchen to cook. Soon enough, Kane managed to a whiff of the food that Kenji was making, so she went down the stairs and saw Kenji holding two steaming bowls with his bare hands. Kane was curious about what it is, although she could already guess what. Kenji already heard her going down, so he looked at her and said, It's ramen! That just confirmed her guess, and immediately sat on the chair of the dining table. While Kenji placed both of the ramens on the table and also Saturday. After they were both sitting, they clapped their hands and said, Itadakimasa! Slurp. Both of them slurped their noddles before stopping and sighing in pleasure. Ha! Huh. Both of them turns their head at each other before laughing. Today is a very lovely day, Kenji thought to himself. While Kane is slurping, she seems to remember something, so she finished slurping and said, Now that I remember, Go Gunhee, the chairman of the Korean Hunters Association, told me that he wants to have a meeting with you, Kane said. Kenji nodded at her and decided to check his emails later. Soon, they both finished eating and it was time for a cuddle while watching movies. This is already their daily life, and most of it is cuddling. So settling on the sofa, they both just laid there and watched some Harry Potter rip-off, called Larry Cutter. It was also then that Kenji remembered that he could publish some famous movies back from his world to this world. Since there are no Marvel Studios here then Kenji could add that to his list. He'll cross the Harry Potter out since there's also a movie that is similar to Harry Potter which they are watching right now. Kenji doesn't want Harry Potter to be called the copycat. Then there are also some famous series, like Stranger Things, but he didn't manage to watch season 4 since he died in 2020. With another goal on his mind, he finally focused on watching the movie till the end. Wow, I didn't think Larry could speak to snakes. After watching the movie, Kane couldn't help but remark. Well, it's kinda lame, Kenji said. Kane was confused so she asks, What do you mean? I mean talking to snakes is lame. Don't ask me why. Kenji chuckled while Kane pouted when she didn't get her answer. Anyway, aren't you supposed to train at this time? Kenji asks. Kane seems to realize something and turned to look at the clock, and it was right, she was late an hour in her martial arts school. 
Although they could get a private teacher, Kane insists on learning with others since she wanted to observe her rate in learning compared to others. Kenji doesn't mind it and allowed her to do what she wants. After that, they both separated and Kenji went to his office and turns on his laptop. Then he went to his emails and saw some of Gunhee's emails to him. Most of them are wanting to arrange a meeting with him. So without hesitation, he dialed the number and called Gunhee. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 9. CH 38. Inside an office, an old man was checking the documents on his desk, when his phone suddenly rings. Picking up the phone. Go Gunhee, speaking. Who is this? At the same time, he was a bit confused, since only his friends knew his private number. If someone wants to call him, then they'll have to call his secretary first. Mushy mushy. Once Gun he heard his voice, he automatically knew who he was talking to. After all, he's been monitoring Kenji since he became an S-rank hunter. Ah, uh, if it isn't Kenji-san, I suppose that Kane-san has already told you about how I wanted to have a meeting with you? Gun he said. Aunt. Kenji confirmed before continuing. So, do you mind telling me why would you want to meet with me? Well, I think it would be better if I tell you in person. Gunhee wearily said. On the other side, Kenji frowns when he heard what he said. Why can't he just tell him on the phone? Why even bother to meet in person? It's not like some hacker is listening, right? After chatting for a few minutes, Kenji finally hangs up before leaning on his chair. Soon... Kenji felt someone entering his office and saw Kane looking at him while wiping off her sweat. Did you call him? She asks. Kenji nodded at her. Yeah, but I don't get it. Why would he want to meet me in person? It's not like we know each other. He shrugs. Well, if something bad happens, I don't think someone could take you on. She chuckled. Kenji also chuckled at her words and stands from the chair before hugging her. W wait, I just trained, I haven't taken a bath yet. She said, while her face was beet red. I haven't too. So let's bath together. He whispered before blowing her ear. Kane felt a chill spreading through her body while she could feel something wet on her honeypot. W wait. She tried begging but to no avail, Kenji just carried her and walked towards the bathroom, ignoring her plead. Soon, Kane found herself leaning on Kenji's muscular chest while both of them were lying in the bathtub, soaked in water. How did we get here? She mentally asked herself. On her back was Kenji who was leaning on the bathtub while hugging her. Now that I think about it, how about we have a spar? I just wanted to try my new powers with you. Kane excitedly said, while fantasizing about her showing her dominance over him. Of course, Kenji didn't know what she was thinking. If he knows then he'll just snort and show her what dominance is. So he agreed but after finishing their bath of course. But Kenji has a different intention. He decided that they'll start their fight now with his hand snaking on her abdomen towards her snatch. Kane felt this and put a stop to his hand by putting her hand over his. What are you doing? A blush crept up to her cheeks while stuttering. What do you think? Kenji closed the gap between his and her head and whispered in her ear before blowing it. Uh -huh. Kenji could already see smoke coming out of her head. Soon his hand finally come in contact with her snatch and slowly wiggled his finger. Aya! Kane moaned with blissful emotion. Kenji seems to enjoy her reaction and wanted to get more out of it, 
so he slowly inserted his middle finger inside her. This time, Kenny can't take it anymore and her back formed an arc shape before moaning loudly. Oh. While Kenji was enjoying this, he thanked whoever the guy on YouTube who makes tutorials on how to pleasure a woman. If it wasn't for him, then this will never happen. With the techniques that he learned, he'll make sure that Kane never makes it out of the bathroom alive. While Kenji was wiggling his finger inside her, Kane could feel a hot stick poking on her back. Curious about what it is, she put her hands behind her and touched it, feeling the hotness on her palm. Only when Kenji moaned behind her that she recognized what she was holding. Ha! Huh. The blush on her face intensifies and she tries to let go of his rod but it seems to stick on her palm and she can't let go of it. Keikane. Kenji stuttered and called her. W8. I can't let it go. Kane tried to find an excuse while massaging his rod. K keep it just like that. Kenji bit his lip and told her. Kane followed what he said and continued stroking his rod. Meanwhile, Kenji just leaned his head back in pleasure but his hand still does not stop and kept fingering her. While Kenny felt like the world was pushing her to stroke faster, and so she did. Kenji felt her stroking fast, which in turn caused him to also finger her fast. At the same time, Kenji noticed that his other hand is vacant, so he uses it to knead her breast. Kane could already feel extreme pleasure on how fast Kenji's finger is, now that adding her breast will result in her coming much earlier. Unknown to both of them, because Kenji was on pleasure, he didn't notice on how fast he was fingering her. If one of them notices it, then they'll know that it is as fast if not, faster than a Zalo Cairo vibrator. Just so you know, the Zalo Cairo One Massager an ultralux wand vibrator designed for maximum stimulation potential. It is the epitome of a sex toy. It is already approved by experts. Last but not the least, it is cheap and affordable if you have money, but let's not talk about this now. Let's focus on Kenji and Kane. Back to the lemon. Just a few seconds later, Kane already felt herself coming. I am coming! Kane's face formed in a higo expression before her back arcs and cummed. Meanwhile, Kenji doesn't feel himself coming, so he was a bit disappointed that she came fast but all that went downhill when she asks him. You're not coming yet? Don't worry I think I could use my mouth. Kane was drunk in pleasure that she didn't mind what she was doing or saying and quickly went to work. Cliffhanger, hello there. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. This is my first time writing Lemon. Tell me what you think. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www. Patreon.com slash Slimesage 8. CH39 Lemon Inside a bathroom, you could see a muscular but not too muscular man, standing in the bathtub while holding both sides of the walls while hair was covering his crotch. At the same time, the hair was bobbing up and down while Kenji was very delighted by what she was doing. He's not gonna lie that this was the first time he's feeling this both in his previous and current life. You must be wondering why he was a virgin, right? Well, it was because he was impotent back in his past life. So basically, he suffers from erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction is the inability to get or keep an erection firm enough to have sexual intercourse. Not only he is impotent, but he was also embarrassed about it and hid it away from the world, and dies without anyone knowing about it. Though some of his friends already have their guesses, but they didn't point them out to save some face for their friend. Glock. 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 Kane was sucking his cock like a pro, which makes Kenji wonder where she learns this. Meanwhile, 
Kane seems to sense Kenji's confusion and immediately clears up the confusion. So she stopped sucking, to his dismay, and told him. There was this lady on YouTube who makes tutorials on how to pleasure men. So I practiced on a cucumber. While saying this, Kane felt like digging a hole and hiding herself inside it, and never come out again. Kenji just felt like laughing since both of them were the same, so he also told her about his. Kane seems to regain herself from embarrassment when she heard this and relief that she wasn't the only one. She thought that it was weird watching tutorials about this, while Kenji was also the same. After recovering from embarrassment, she then went and resumed sucking on his cock. Meanwhile, Kenji doesn't like his hands to be idle. So he went and grabbed one of Kane's breasts and kneaded them like there's no tomorrow. After that, he seems to be attracted by her glistening abs, so he also placed his other hand on her abs and slowly massaged it. Obviously, Kane didn't mind this and felt extra pleasure just from his touch. Ahn! She moaned. Then, Kenji pinched her nipples which forces Kane to moan much louder, without caring if someone outside heard her. Actually, their mansion is soundproof, so she could moan and scream in pleasure as loud as she wants and no one will hear it. Meanwhile, Kenji felt like he was on top of the moon. Although Kane wasn't an expert in sucking, at least she has some skills to brag on. Well, at first, she made some small mistakes by accidentally brushing her teeth on his rod but who is he? He is Superman, such a thing doesn't hurt even a little. So he just let it be, and she slowly adapted and finally became proficient enough to please him. Her learning skill is extremely terrifying. Gluck. 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 Noticing that it's been 15 minutes since she sucked, she noticed that not even a drop of cum is coming out, so she decided to increase the pace. Of course, Kenji felt this and so he stopped fondling her breasts and started assisting her by pushing and pulling her hair. Meanwhile, drops of saliva were already coming out of her mouth. With her speed, the pace that she's going could make an average guy come in seconds. But Kenji is no average guy. He is Superman for fuck's sake. Even with her current speed, Kenji could hold himself for 15 hours but Kenji doesn't want that, so he decided to release some drops of cums before he told her. Faster! I'm coming! Kenji already closed his eyes in pleasure before releasing a manly moan. Splurt. 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 Kane's cheeks bulged while her eyes widened in shock. She could feel a warm sensation passing through her tongue and sliding down on her throat. Gulp. 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 She decided to swallow his cum, since, from her information, men's like it better when women swallow their cum. So she did. As expected, Kenji felt satisfaction when he saw Kane swallowing his cum. After a few seconds, Kane finally swallowed all his cum. She then opened her mouth wide open for Kenji to see. Kenji could see that she really swallowed his cum and nodded in satisfaction. Seeing Kenji nod, Kane felt like she just achieved a huge achievement and felt proud of herself. Once it was done, Kenji felt that the bathtub is too small for their activities, so he went and grabbed Kane by her armpits and immediately appeared inside their bedroom in just a blink of an eye. Kane didn't even manage to react before she was thrown to the bed by Kenji while she was being stared at by him like a predator to its prey. Kenji licked his lips before grinning at seeing the outlines of Kane's muscles on her body. He's not gonna lie, maybe he has a thing for muscular women? With her slender and wet body due to the water, then there was her wet hair on both her hair and her bush, Kenji felt his dick almost exploding. Meanwhile, Kane just noticed Kenji's extremely hard reddish dick, and she could almost see the outlines of his veins. Kane felt like it was gonna explode so she immediately went to help by touching the rod and slowly massaging it carefully. Of course, it's not gonna explode or something, 
It was just because it was Kenji's first time doing this, so he was a little bit excited. So without hesitation, he grabbed both of her legs and spread them, just to see her snatch in its full wet glory while bit by bits of her bush was covering the upper part. From what he learned before sex, he first needed to lubricate his dick or make her wet enough so it will not hurt when he went inside. So after spreading her thighs, he pushed his head forward and licked her pussy. Anne! Kane moaned without holding back. Just the pleasure she is feeling, she could feel her vision darkening from the pleasure. Soon, Kenji hastened and his tongue became an ultra vibrator. Kane's eyes widened in shock before letting out one last moan before passing out. Meanwhile, Kenji finally finished gobbling her and looked at the passed out Kane. The excited smile on his face was immediately replaced by a sad expression. As if sensing that the exciting part is gone, his dick slowly went soft before becoming fully soft. Kenji felt bad about this. Sorry, buddy. He patted the head of his dick while saying this. Soon, Kenji carefully went to Kane's side and hugged her but not before covering themselves in a blanket. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. This is my first time writing Lemon. Tell me what you think. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www. Patreon.com slash Slimesage 8. CH40 Morning sunlight shone through the gaps of the curtains, directly hitting the bodies of two people in their birthday suits. They're Kenji and Kane, they just finished an activity yesterday, so they were naked in their bed. The first one to wake up was Kane, who opens her eyes and saw that she was back in her room. Wadash! Kane didn't manage to finish what she was saying before she remembered what she did and all that happened yesterday. I did that. Her cheeks flushed, while her hands were covering her face in embarrassment. She can't believe what they did yesterday, although they sometimes cuddle, but what they did yesterday was on a whole another level. She then remembered Kenji, so she turns her head to the side and saw him lying on her side with an innocent sleeping face. If she didn't know that he's the strongest human in the world, she might mistake him for a model or something. Her eyes then went down, tracing all his body parts with her eyes, until she reached somewhere that makes her cheeks much redder. I it's big even if it's soft. She thought to herself while resisting the urge to touch it and hold it, but she didn't want to wake him up, especially since this is the first time she saw him sleeping with such an innocent face. All she did was to gently go out of the bed before rushing toward the bathroom. The first thing she did was to brush her teeth and take a bath. But while she was taking a bath, she remembered that they had first started right here in this bathtub. Then she slowly traced her abs with her finger. From what she can remember, Kenji seems to have a fetish for abs or something considering that he kept rubbing her stomach. Slowly, her finger finally reached her pussy, and before she knew it, she slowly inserted her finger and masturbated. On, she tried to be as quiet as she can, as to not wake Kenji up. Ha! Huh. Kenji! Ah! Uh. Getting lost in pleasure, she leaned her head back and kept fingering herself, not knowing that someone just entered the bathroom since she forgot to lock it. Whistle. Was yesterday not enough? Kane was jolted in shock before stopping and looking at the entrance, just to see Kenji leaning on his shoulders while smirking at her. Kane was already blushing, so when she saw him, her blush intensifies before shouting. Kaya! Get out! She then levitated the toothbrushes and some products that can be found in the bathroom before throwing them at Kenji. The smirk on Kenji doesn't go off, and he's still smirking even though he was hit by all the things that she threw at him. Even so, 
He just shakes his head before going out of the bathroom, but not without taking a peek at her voluptuous body before he left. Inside the bathroom, Kane finally calms down before realizing what she did. Gah! Kane, you idiot! He already saw everything on you yesterday. What's the point of being shy now? She covered her face with her hands before lecturing herself. Meanwhile, outside the bathroom, the sight of Kane masturbating was already printed on his head, and he kept it in the center of his memory, so he could easily remember it whenever he wanted to. He then chuckled when he remembered her reaction when she noticed him them. Shaking his head. Women. After that, he decided to cook breakfast while waiting for Kane to finish her bath. Inside the bathroom, Kane was finally finished and was about to go out when she suddenly remembers what happened earlier. She felt both embarrassed and guilty, so she knew that she has to apologize to him somehow. With that, she went out of the bathroom, but she didn't see Kenji inside, so she just assumed that he must be out or cooking breakfast or something. Back to Kenji, he just finished cooking their breakfast, when he heard Kane going down the stairs. Let's eat, he told her. Meanwhile, Kane was finally downstairs but she just stayed still while bowing her head down. Ayano, Kenchan, I wanted to apologize for my behavior earlier. I was just surprised. It's fine. I know how complex women's mind works. Kenji easily forgave her. After all, she's his girlfriend, and her behavior earlier was just a small thing to him. There's no need to make it bigger. Iessie Dash. She was about to sigh in relief when she suddenly realized the meaning of his last words. Turning her head, she saw Kenji smirking at her, so she just huffed and pouted. Don't compare me to those women you're thinking of. I'm superior than them. She smiled and said while raising her head as high as she can. Kenji just shakes his head at her antics, and they both finally ate their breakfast. Once they're done, Kane asks him, So, when are you meeting him? Kenji placed his finger on his chin as if he was thinking about something before stating, After we have our spar. Kane grins at the word spar. She can't wait to test her newly acquired strength. Who knows, maybe she could land a hit or two. While at the same time, she was thinking about who was the shadow and star monarch vessels that even someone like the rulers have to rely on them to defeat. She decided to train herself nonstop before facing these vessels that she was tasked to eliminate. How about we do it now? Said the grinning Kane. Kenji just sighed at her other side, but still decided to agree since he too wanted to test her strength. Kenji nodded and said, Sure. Let's go. Before standing and walking toward the gym. Kane soon followed him and finally, when they reached the gym, they were in front of each other, face to face, while eyeing each other, trying to search for some openings. Kane lost her patience and attacked first, by rushing towards him, but what they both didn't expect was, the speed of Kane. If it was before, it will only took her less than two seconds to reach him, but now it was only half a second before she appeared in front of him. Even Kenji didn't expect this speed of hers but managed to recover and reacted fast enough to intercept her. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 7 CH41. Kane wasn't discouraged by this, in fact, she felt excited since she could feel that her speed is definitely faster than the speed of sound. Meanwhile, Kenji smiled at seeing Kane's speed and strength, even he could tell just how much she improved. So it's not wrong to say that he was very proud of her. He just hopes that she won't get drunk in her power, 
He had already seen many hunters who used to be good guys become corrupted and evil when they became A or S rank hunters. S ranks are mostly the arrogant ones and Kenji knew why. Because they're drunk on success and power, they thought that they are the center of the world, as if the whole world favors them. But Kenji wasn't anything like them, even if he has the power, success, fame, and glory, he's not letting himself be drowned in it. But Kane is different, although Kenji trusts her, she's still a human, and the seven sins will always exist in everyone. Kenji knows how complex the human mind is. One time they can be good, but the next moment they become bad. Kenji was forced out of his thoughts when alarms blared on his head, so he tilted his head just in time to avoid the deadly kick of Kane. You're distracted! Kane yelled in frustration. Kenji was the one who taught her the rule of not to be distracted in battle, but he himself was the one who broke his own rule, so Kane was frustrated. Kenji just chuckled which just put some oil into the fire, increasing the frustration of Kane. Without saying anything anymore, Kane rushed again but this time, instead of kicking like earlier, she'll try to use her fists. Once again, Kane was in front of Kenji with her fists stretching out to his face. But to Kenji, although it was much faster than the last time, it was still slow for him, so he easily caught her fist. But Kane was far from done, so seeing her punch was blocked, she sent another blow after blow, before she knew it, she was already sending a barrage of blows. From the outside perspective, Kane's arms were blurring out due to the speed at which she was going out. Even Kenji was impressed by her speed, if his guess is correct, then Kane could probably contend with some national rank hunters. While dodging her barrage of punches, Kenji suddenly felt something hit him on his back. When he turned around, he saw countless weapons, varying from spears to katanas, floating there with their tip facing forward to him. The one that hit him in the back was a sharp spear, but because of his durability, the blade of the spear was bent sideways. It was only then that Kenji noticed that his shirt has a hole on the back, exactly where the spear has hit him. This is my favorite shirt, Kenji grumbled. Meanwhile, Kane was happy that she managed to hit Kenji, albeit it didn't do much. Haha. <laughs> Kenji obviously knew what Kane was feeling right now since it is her first time hitting him. But it seems like Kane was greedy and wanted to hit him for the second time, so she unleashed all the weapons and it all flew toward him quickly. Kenji casts a look, really? to Kane before dodging all the weapons. No way he's gonna give Kane a second time. He'll teach her a lesson, maybe also teach her the lesson later. Kenji was amused by his thoughts, but first, he needed to show his dominance. So he dodged all the weapons that were coming his way while at the same time, destroying them one by one using his heat vision. Meanwhile, sweat was already forming on her forehead, as she needed to use her entire focus to control the weapons and move them. But since Kenji was destroying them one by one, it was also making Kane use less focus since fewer weapons mean less focus. But she didn't want that, she wanted to adapt to controlling the weapons with little focus. So turning her head, she saw another rack full of weapons, including a cabinet containing some weapons created from some fangs or claws of some A-rank monsters. The weapons in the cabinet and the rack trembled due to Kane's control until the cabinet and the rack were broken and the weapons swarmed out under Kane's control. Soon, the weapons that were swarming Kenji were destroyed and when he turned to Kane to tease her, he saw another swarm of weapons but this time it contained some weapons that were forged from A-rank monsters. And some of those A-rank monsters were magical monsters, so this means that those weapons might contain mana in them, which is his weakness. Shit! Kenji grumbled on his breath, since when did Kane become cunning? And did she know about his weakness in magic? Soon, the weapons finally reached him, and Kenji was forced to destroy the weapons that contains mana in them using his heat vision. Maybe I should tell her about my weakness. 
I mean, she's my girlfriend, and lying to her leaves a bad taste in my mouth and besides, my parents already knew about it, then why can't she? Kenji fell into contemplation. He at least trusts her enough that she'll not sell him to others. Shortly, the magic weapons were finally destroyed by him, and all that was left are the normal weapons. Suddenly, a look of realization appeared on Kenji's face. Can I? He then turns and tried to find her, but he didn't see her where she was supposed to be. It was then that he felt the chill behind him, as if it was like a spidey sense, telling him of danger. So, without hesitation, he bent his body backward, just in time for him to see Kane's flying kick on where his head's previous location. But since he was bending backward, and Kane was wearing a skirt, he could see her pink panty, but... It's a bit wet. Kenji mutters in his mind. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 7. CH42 for a whole two hours, Kenji and Kane kept fighting until all the weapons in the gym were destroyed by Kenji. Not only that, but Kane was also exhausted already, so Kenji brought her to the bathroom to take a bath and rest. But when they both went outside after another hour, Kane was limping while using Kenji as her assistant in walking. It was fun. Kenji chuckled in his mind. Not gonna lie. He's getting addicted to playing with Kane. When they were young, they used to play with toys with each other but now they played each other. After their fun, Kenji brought Kane to their bedroom so she can rest and heal from their battle. Kenji estimated that she'll heal in less than 30 minutes since that's how mana works in the body. But Kane is different, she's a vessel of a ruler, so she could heal in less than 30 minutes, unlike other mages that heal in an hour. I'll be going now. I'll meet with Gunhi. Kenji told her before kissing her on her lips as a goodbye. Take care. Kane smiled and said. Kenji nodded and smiled before going out of the house and into the garage. The same old black Draco GT was sitting there. Soon, Kenji went on his ride before driving off the garage. I think I'll eat some pizza first. Kenji thought before driving to a nearby Domino's. But first thing first, he wears a black face mask, a black car, and sunglasses before walking towards Domino's. If he's gonna choose between Domino's and Pizza Hut, then he'll certainly choose Domino's. Change my mind. Let's skip this part. So Kenji ordered two boxes of pizza before eating them in the car while driving. Soon, he finished them at the same time as he arrived in the airport. Exactly where his private plane is. It's not like he's tired of flying, but he just wanted to enjoy the wealthy life he was given. Once he's aboard, he played some games on his phone. There are many games in this world but almost 80% of them focus on Hunter's V.S. monsters. To his surprise, he was also included in the games, He's an SSR character, by the way. Before he knew it, his plane already landed at the Japanese airport. Getting off his plane, he was greeted by the sight of the sun shining on him, while flashes of cameras were flashing in front of his vision. Sir! Sir! Could you tell us the purpose of your visit? Are here to finish the S rank in Jeju Island. One of the reporters gathered courage and ran up to him to ask the question. Now that I remember it, I didn't finish the dungeon because I was too focused on saving Kane. A look of realization appeared on his face before recovering. I'm only here to have a meeting with Go Gunher. As for the s rank gate in Jeju Island, I'll see what I can do. Kenji handled the reporters well before proceeding to escape the crowd. Sir! Sir, 
More and more reporters tried to ask questions but Kenji ignored them before boarding a limo. Let's go, Kenji told the driver, who nodded before revving the engine. Kenji could see that some reporters tried to follow behind, but they were only normal humans, so they didn't catch up. Am I really that famous? Kenji muttered under his breath. By the time Kenji was finished contemplating his fame, they'd finally arrived at the Korean Hunters Association headquarters. But before Kenji could step inside, the driver shyly asks him for an autograph, because his daughter was a fan of him. Of course, Kenji wasn't a rude guy, so he nodded and signed a pink shirt that the driver pulled out of the driver's seat. Once that was done, Kenji finally stepped inside and saw the lady behind the desk nodding at him. This way, sir. The lady gestured for him to follow her. Kenji did and soon they arrived inside an office, where Kenji could see an old man with a kind smile sitting behind a desk. The lady has left, leaving only Kenji and Go Gunhi, sitting on a couch, facing against each other. Would you like some tea? Gunhi offered to him. While Kenji kindly accepted, not caring if it is poisoned or not. After sipping on his tea, he finally asks, So, what's the reason for calling me for a meeting? Scratching the back of his head. Well, I don't know how I should tell you this, but I have to confess something to you. Gun, he said. Kenji frowns while thinking, is he gay? Once he thought of this, he unconsciously covered his chest and crotch area. Seeing the confusion, Gun, he immediately cleared up the misunderstanding. It's not like that. I just wanted to tell you something. Once clearing the misunderstanding, Gunhi sighed in relief before saying, What is it? Kenji was curious about what this old man is up to. Well, you see, Kane is my daughter. Gunhi immediately dropped a bomb, shocking even Kenji. She's your what? Kenji lost his composure and asked Gunhi. Please calm down, Kenji-san. Yes, she's my daughter. Gun he confirmed once again. If she's your daughter, then why did you buy milk? Kenji asks. Well, I heard from a friend Dash. Wait, is that what you're really asking now? Gun he was about to answer when he realized what he was asking him. Ahem, what I meant was why didn't you come back for her? Kenji coughed slightly before changing his question. I was afraid. Afraid that she'll reject me and treat me as if I'm not her father. Gunhi was tearing up when he said this. Well, you should expect that treatment after leaving her and her mother for 18 years. Kenji was a bit calm at first, but he lost his demeanor and shouted at him. It's not Kenji's fault for being mad. Sometimes, he could feel Kane craving for a father's love a father's presence for her to lean on. Someone who could give her a piggyback when she was little. Someone who could teach her how to handle her bullies. Someone to relieve the burden of Sheena, Kane's mother. If it wasn't for Kenji's family, Sheena might have already died from extreme stress and depression because of work. It was only Sheena's will and perseverance that they aren't living in the slums by now. Realizing what he's done, Kenji collected himself before apologizing. I'm sorry about that. I just lost my calm there. No. I deserve that. Thank you. Shaking his head, Gunhi said to him. Why did you even leave her in Shina-san? Kenji finally asked the million-dollar question. Getting serious, Gunhi leaned forwards and asked him. Kenji-san, do you know about monarchs and rulers? Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read ten advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage. 6. CH43. 
Hearing what Gunhee just said, Kenji also got serious and leaned forward. Seeing that Kenji was finally serious, then he assumed that he already knows about monarchs and rulers. You see, I was chosen as a ruler's vessel, and then I moved here, far away from my family. Then he said. Why? With just one word, Kenji asked. Then he was silent for a few seconds before sighing and speaking. When the rulers told about the vessels of the monarchs, I knew that the moment I gained this power, there has to be consequences. One of the possible consequences is the death of my family. He then continued. I was afraid that something bad will happen to Sheena and Kane when I became a ruler's vessel. That's why I distanced myself away from them. I can't stand the danger that I have that might affect them too. I wanted them to have a normal life. Away from the dangers of this world. But then, I received news about Kenny being your girlfriend. Once he said that the whole room has fallen silent, only the breathings of both vessels can be heard. I'm not going against your relationship with her. I just hope that you will protect her and let no harm come in her way. Gunhee was serious when he said that. I think you're too late for that, Kenji told him, which confused the old man. What do you mean? Gunhee frowned and felt a bad feeling from this. She also became a ruler's vessel, like you. Kenji dropped a bomb right on top of his head. SS she what? Gunhee lost his calm when he heard Kenji. After sacrificing everything he had, just for his family to have a normal life, only for it to be destroyed because a ruler took his daughter as his vessel. Gunhee calms down soon after but is still a bit shocked by what happened. Rubbing his temples, he asks, Since when? Kenji answered that it was during her trip to Jeju Island. Hearing his answer, Gunhee was now regretting allowing her to raid the S-rank dungeon. There's no point crying over spilled milk, it already happened. So, what are you gonna do now? Kenji said. Gunhee seems to think for a few seconds before making up his mind. Distancing myself away from them to protect them is already thrown out of the box. I think I need to come back. Gunhee said while muttering the last sentence, which Kenji heard and smiled. I think you might need my help. Kenji smiled and said. Gunhee nodded and said, Yes, I need you, he dash dot. But he didn't manage to finish his sentence when Kenji cuts him off. What's in it for me? Kenji said. A tick mark appeared on Gunhee's forehead while saying, Brad, is that how you talk to your father-in-law? Nope. I mean, not yet. Kane still doesn't consider you her father, right? You should try to make up with them first. Drops and drops of knife kept stabbing Gunhee's heart, just hearing the words of Kenji. All right, all right. I'll try to make up for my mistakes. Gunhee sighed and said, When are you gonna do it? Kenji asks. I think I'll go back home tomorrow. But before I go, I hope you could help me find someone to replace my position. You're retiring? Not now. Maybe next year. I still have many things to settle while I'm still the chairman. He said. Oh, and by the way, when are you gonna clear the Jeju Island? You know that island has been infested with different kinds of monster ants, and most of our S ranks are dead because of it. He continued. I'll clear it tomorrow. I'll just call Kane first. Kenji nodded and said. Gunhee seems to become nervous when he heard that Kenji's going to chat with Kane. Meanwhile, Kenji, sensing Gunhee's nervousness, assured him. Don't worry, I'm not planning to tell her yet, it's better if you tell her yourself. Gunhee sighed in relief and nodded at his words. He wanted to be the one who tell Kane and Sheena the truth. Maybe only Kane because there's no need to involve Sheena, which only increases the danger. Soon, Kenji was gone out of the room, leaving only Gunhi alone. Back to Kenji, currently, he was nowhere on earth. Instead, 
he's flying toward the sun to increase his strength. He doesn't know what type of Superman he is, whether gold, bronze, or silver Superman. So he wanted to know how much can his strength rise and know if he has limits or something. He wished that he was Silver Superman, so he could just sneeze the monarchs to death. But then, he remembered his weakness against magic, which makes Kenji a bit nervous, facing the monarchs. Although he has his anti-magic Superman suit, he knows that it has its limits, so relying on such an item is not a good idea. He needed to find another way for him to be immune to magic. Wait a minute. Kenji seems to realize something. The stone. Kenji continues. During his time in the U.S., after defeating Kamish, the president gave him a blue glowing stone. Kenji tries to look through it using his x-ray, but it can't seem to detect anything bad. So, Kenji just went home and kept it inside his closet until he completely forgets about it. I wonder what that is. I think I should go and check it out after this. Kenji finally arrived in space. He could see the sun, moon, and stars in their full glory. He went on and flew towards the sun. And while he was flying towards it, he could feel once again the strength the sunlight is giving him. This feeling never gets old. He chuckled. He was only staying in the sun during his free time. So he kinda missed the feeling. Then he remembered his past during his childhood. All the memories he acquired ever since he reincarnated in this place. While he already accepted Chikashi and Hana as his real parents, but that doesn't mean he'll forget his first parents. He's not that ungrateful. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 6. CH44 Soon, a few hours have passed, with Kenji just sunbathing in the sun. He could already handle the heat of the core but, he could still feel the heat burning his skin, so he has to stay a little bit away from it. Maybe next week, he could handle it but not now. After deciding that it was finally enough, Kenji soon went back to Earth, exactly where his home is. Because he was wearing normal clothes earlier, he has to get home but naked. But thankfully, with his speed, even if the camera caught him, it will only see a blur. Back in his house, he saw Kenny jogging around the house, and when she saw him, she stops and waved her hand at him. Kenji waved back at her, while at the same time, remembering what gun he and he talked about earlier. He can't feel anything but anticipation, he can't wait for Kenny to receive the news that she has a father and will soon be reunited with her and her mother. He just hopes that Kane won't kill Gunhi, even though he doesn't know which one of them is stronger, but he'll place his bets on Kane since Gunhi is already old and is almost retiring. At the same time, he also remembered Ban, the chairman of the Japan Hunters Association, was also on the verge of retiring and is currently looking for his successor. Darling! Kane called out to him. Hey, Honorable. Kenji awkwardly tried to also call her. That sounds weird and awkward. Kane blushed and told him. That's right, they'd been practicing how to call each other aside from their names. Mainly on the romance side. Really? Then how about Angel? Kenji asks, but Kane shakes her head. Sugar? She shakes her head again. Honey? She did the same. Ah, uh, babe? This time Kane seems to think about it before nodding her head. All right then, babe it is. Kenji also nodded. While they walked back to their home, Kane told him something. Earlier, Bon called me and asks if you're having any problems recruiting someone to your guild. He said maybe he can help. 
Well, I do have trouble recruiting, but I think someone just caught my eye, Kenji said. Really? Who is it? Kane excitedly said. Well, Uncle Iroh just called me to celebrate his son's awakening this morning, Kenji said. Oh, you mean Lu Ten, right? Kane seems to remember the teen who likes to play with them five years ago. Yup, Kenji said, popping the pea. But Uncle Iroh already has a guild, right? What if Uncle wants to recruit his son to his guild? Kane said. Well, if Uncle says that, then we'll have to let him go and find another. Kenji shrugs. To be honest, he feels like he's not suitable for this guild or something. He's more of a lone wolf. So, are we coming? Kane changed the subject. Yeah, so you should take a bath and we'll go later. Kenji nodded at her words. Kane did as he told and ran to the bathroom to take a bath. While Kenji just sat on the sofa to watch some pen flax and relax, the version of Netflix and chill in this world. Three swirls a portal opens back on Jeju Island. An island that has been devoid of life ever since an S-rank gate appeared and goes into an outbreak, killing everyone. A blue-skinned man with a pointed ear emerges from the portal while grinning evilly. Ha, is this the world that the rulers chose as the battlefield? Not bad, Dot. The blue-skinned man said while a serious look stays on his face. Meanwhile, another man emerges from the blue portal, but this time... It was a huge man with large muscles who came out, with animalistic features on his whole body and face. The huge man sniffs and exhales. I can smell someone strong came here. Oh, is it the Shadow Monarch? Or the Star Monarch? Or perhaps a ruler? Another one came out of the gate, but this time, it was a pale-skinned woman, with black hair, while her whole aura was glowing in green giving her a toxic vibe. You also picked up a trail here, Quiratia? The blue-skinned man asks. Of course, Frost, I'll never forget a monarch's and ruler's aura. The woman, now known as Quiratia, replied to Frost. The trail seems to have gone off. We should hide and wait for them to appear again. We can't let the rulers know we're here the huge man said before slashing open a gate and leaving the island. TCH, coward! Frost snickered before also opening a gate and leaving the island. Talk about being gentlemen! Quiratia sneered but also left in a portal. Kenji, oblivious to all that has happened on Jeju Island, has already arrived back at his parents' home since the celebration will take place here. Parking his car in the garage, he went out and walked towards the other side of the car and opens it, revealing Kane in her purple and black dress. As for what Kenji is wearing, it was an all-black tuxedo. Once they arrived, they were greeted by his parents and Sheena. Meanwhile, Iroh was inside the house, taking care of Lu Ten if he ever has any needs. Since this is not a big party, only Kenji... Kane, Chikashi, Hana, Shina, some of Iroh's relatives, and the friends of Lu Ten from school. So after greeting everyone, Kenji finally went inside to greet the birthday boy, Lu Ten. Uncle Kenji! Lu Ten, who was chatting with some of his classmates, saw Kenji arrive, so he left his friends and greeted Kenji. However, before Lu Ten could further celebrate, a fist smashed on his head while earning him a glare from Kenji. What did I tell you about calling me, uncle? Call me Oniai-chan. Okay. Okay. Oniai-chan. Lu Ten blushed while trying so hard to speak the word, while at the same time, also earning a few laughs from his friends behind. That's right. Anyway, I heard from Uncle Iroh that you awakened this morning. Kenji changed the topic. Yup. Lu Ten cheered up and said, popping the pea. That's good. How about joining my guild, eh? Kenji took this chance to invite him from his guild. HM? 
Sure. Lu Ten was confused at first but immediately agrees. Wait? That easy? How about your father's guild? Won't you be joining it? Kenji felt that this was too easy. Meanwhile, Lu Ten just deadpanned and stared at him like he was an idiot. Oni Ai Chan, if I'm gonna choose between my father's guild and the strongest hunter's guild, it's pretty obvious what my answer will be. Lu Ten shrugs before continuing. And besides, ever since father retired, the firebenders guild started crumbling because the newly appointed leader was very incompetent. I see. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 5. CH45 Then, do you have the permission of Uncle Iroh? Kenji asks him. Yup. Lu Ten nodded excitedly. He can't wait to be part of the Strongest Hunters Guild. Then I'll let you join my guild. Just ask your father how to register as a hunter and to join my guild. Kenji told him while Lu Ten nodded his head before going back to his group of friends. He can't wait to tell his friends about it. Kenji also left to go back to his girlfriend when suddenly an earthquake strikes the mansion. Asterisk boom. Asterisk. Earthquake. Kaya. Lu Ten's friends started screaming in fear while Kenji raised his eyebrow at such a sudden earthquake. All the utensils, tables, frames, and many more, started shaking while the others were falling to the ground. Suddenly it stops. It stopped? One of them suddenly asks. Before they could sigh in relief, the door was suddenly blasted open and a heavy-looking gruff man walked inside while sniffing everywhere. His outfit makes him look like a barbarian with scars on his body, which just added his scary aura effect. He's here. I could smell him dot. The man growled. Kenji narrowed his eyes when he heard the man speak in the monster language. He gestures for Lu Ten and his friends to retreat immediately. Meanwhile, Chikashi and Hana had already arrived and were ready to fight the huge man. His aura seems familiar. Chikashi narrowed his glowing eyes. Hannah didn't say anything and quietly watched the man, so she could react in time if he ever moves first. When the man looks at them and sees Chikashi and Hannah, he grins like a man-man and said, There's two of you, huh? How lucky I am, Dot. The man's grin widens and before Chikashi and Hannah could react, he disappeared and before they knew it, Chikashi had already flown back at extreme speeds. Han! Hannah worriedly shouted but unknown to her, she was already the man's next target. Boom! Fortunately, she managed to react in time and block the man's punch, but because of the difference in strength, her bones were shattered and like Chikashi, she was also thrown back. Meanwhile, Kenji didn't manage to react fast enough to save his father, and because of this, his mother was also thrown back. Anger flowed through him, and before he knew it, he already sent a devastating blow toward the man. Boom! The man just raised his arm to block his punch. That hurts, Dot. Because of his punch, the man's forearm that he used to block was injured heavily, and the force of his punch traveled through the man's body, making him spit a little blood. However, before Kenji could sigh in relief, the man's forearm healed in an instant, and his face was grabbed by him like a ball. Boom! The man directly smashed his face on the floor, shattering it and forming a crater on the ground. Luckily, the civilians had already escaped the vicinity, leaving only the hunters who were too weak to react to the fight. Meanwhile, Kenji thanked his durability, and he was able to survive with a little scratch. 
but that scratch made him go into a serious mode and decided to not underestimate his enemy. Ho, oh, you're tough. Tell me, what is your name? The man grins and licked his lips. Kenji. You. Kenji decided to play along and asked in the same monster language, shocking the man a little bit but quickly recovering. HMPF, I don't need to tell a dead man my name. But you can call me Beast for now. Beast replied. Kenji felt irritated by Beast's arrogance so he decided to shut him up using his fists. Taking the chance, he dashed and punched Beast on his lower jaw, breaking it, when he heard a crack. Crack. However, it immediately healed as fast as it was cracked, while Kenji felt like he was fighting Lobo or something. But he wasn't discouraged by this. No matter how fast he can heal, he'll just continue wounding him until his regeneration can't catch up. That hurts more than the previous one dot. Beast raised his eyebrow at the strength Kenji displayed. He doesn't know who Kenji is or was, but one thing is for sure, he knew that he must also be a vessel of a ruler or a monarch. Are you a vessel? He curiously asks. No shit, Sherlock, Kenji said. Beast doesn't what it means but he knows that Kenji must be insulting him in some kind of way. Arrogant fool! Beast cursed him. However, a sea of flames suddenly swarmed him. Kenji, are you alright? It turns out to be Iroh, who just arrived. Uncle Iroh, I'm fine. But you should leave quickly. He's not someone you could handle. Kenji immediately said. Although Iroh felt a bit of shame being called weak, but still did as told, and retreated. Meanwhile, the flames have resided, and it shows Beast in his full glory, without a burn or scorch. That felt good. He grins wildly. Is he also a vessel? Kenji was curious since this is the first time he encounters someone this strong. And only a monarch's vessel came up in his mind. Perhaps, because he was thinking, he failed to react to the Beast's punch on his face. Boom! His nose bled a little but he could handle it just fine, it'll just heal itself in a minute. He clutched his left side of the nose and strongly snorted his other side of the nose, spitting some blood. Guessing from your strength, you must be a vessel of a gorilla monarch, or something. Kenji mocked him. HMPF, comparing me to a gorilla shows that you have the courage. Courage to die. Beast's nails grow sharper and longer before attacking him quickly. At first, Kenji thought of tanking the slash but gets a bad feeling, so Kenji decided to dodge. However, it was too late, and the slash hit him on his shoulders, taking a good chunk of flesh. Kenji hissed in pain since this was the first time he felt pain in his life. While he was fighting Beast. Kane just finished helping in the evacuation and was about to go back to help Kenji when suddenly, her alarms blared and she dodged in time, just to see a beautiful woman, walking towards her, while green smoke was coming out of her. Don't go back now, let the beast have his fun. I'll take you on, little girl. Quaresha mocked Kane, which makes her angry at being called a little girl. You're on. She grins excitedly. Excited at the thought of fighting a strong opponent, other than Kenji. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 5. CH46 Back in the battle with the Beast Monarch, Kenji just dodged Beast's claws but it still injured him on his shoulder. Shit! That nails are bad news. Kenji doesn't know how Beast managed to bypass his defenses and injured him, even taking a chunk of his flesh. Perhaps, his claws are installed with some kind of magic or mana. 
He's regretting not wearing his suit all the time like Superman, and now he has to be careful of his enemy. Beast then licked the blood on his claw that was used to injure him. You taste good. Hearing what he said, Kenji suddenly shudders before covering his chest and crotch. Damn, are you gay or something? Kenji suddenly felt like the beast was not like he expected him to be. That seems to trigger Beast, so he shouted at him. Damn you! Beast then rushed to him, while his claws were ready to strike him and kill him. Kenji, who just learned that his claw could fatally injure him, dodged and grabbed Beast's arm, then twisted it strongly. Crack! With his strength, Beast's arm was twisted at impossible angles, before blood blows out of his arm, and some of his bones were protruding from his arm. Graf! Beast yelled in pain. This is the first time someone could injure him this bad. Perhaps only the Shadow Monarch could do it. But what he's facing is not the Shadow Monarch, since he doesn't use any of his signature moves. This only leaves Beast with two options. Either Kenji is a vessel of the Star Monarch, which he wasn't familiar with, or he is just too strong of a mortal. A god in a mortal's body. It is the only thing he could describe Kenji. However, Kenji wasn't done yet. After breaking his arm, he didn't wait for him to regenerate, and directly released a laser beam from his eyes, which directly sliced his shoulder from up to down. Bam! Beast's arm fell off the floor, while the part where it was cut off was sizzling. Grag! Beast kneeled in pain while holding his decapitated arm. Kenji could see that his arm is slowly regenerating, so he knew he had to finish this fast. With a quick dash, Kenji sent a full blow punch towards the kneeling Beast's face. Fortunately, Beast managed to react in time and blocked his punch with his other arm. Because of Kenji's immense strength, the arm that he used to block his punch was mangled up to his shoulder. Boom! Luckily, his other arm has regenerated and Beast countered with a punch to Kenji's ribs. Crack! Kenji endured the pain, and grabbed Beast by his head and threw him far up in the sky before his eyes glowed in red and blasted Beast off. Zian. A hole was formed in Beast's stomach, while he was spitting blood. Shit! Who is this guy? Fear spread on Beast's face and was thinking of retreating. Too bad for him, Kenji wasn't gonna let him. So when Kenji flew and catches up to him, Kenji grabbed his clothes and proceeded to smash him back on the ground. Asterisk boom! Asterisk. A huge crater was formed with Beast in the middle of it, while pecks of dust was spread around the vicinity, blinding anyone inside it. But to Kenji... This wasn't a hassle to him. With his x-ray vision, he could see clearly that Beast was about to open a blue and escape. So with a quick dash, he reached him quickly and grabbed his hair. Where do you think you're going? Kenji raised his eyebrows and asks. Shit! That was the only thing that was on Beast's mind before his face was slammed through the floor, like what he did to Kenji earlier. After that, Kenji brought his face close to his and asked him, Where are the other monarch vessels? Seeing that Beast was silent all the time, Kenji knew that he'll not be talking anytime soon. Fine, don't talk. I'm trained in making others scream. Slowly, he grabbed Beast's head with both of his thumbs on each of his eyes before slowly and painfully pushing his finger in. Growling. Beast tried to endure the pain. You're one tough fella. Kenji smirks. He could see that his eyes were slowly healing themselves. Kenji grins after seeing this while his eyes slowly glowed in red before his eyes released Superman's famous signature, piercing Beast's eyes while at the same time, slowly melting his brains. However, perhaps because of the almighty plot, an ice dagger suddenly stabbed Kenji on his back. Splat. Kenji doesn't know how can something physical can hurt him, but there is only one thing that came up on his mind. Magic. Kenji dropped the twitching body of Beast, 
which clearly stated that he was barely alive, while Kenji turns around just in time to see a blue-skinned elf grinning at him. Kakik, that laser eyes of yours seem familiar. Who is it again? Star Monarch? It turned out to be Frost, who just arrived after sensing such huge destruction. Behind him were the corpses of various hunters. Perhaps, because Kenji was too focused on the fight, he didn't notice the destruction that their fight caused around them. Because of the huge fight, it is inevitable for the Hunters Association to send someone to help. Unfortunately, what they're fighting isn't just some random and normal monster. Instead, it is one of the highest existence in the whole universe. The Monarchs Kenji then became mad when he saw Iroa's corpse was among them. But thankfully, he could see him breathing, but barely. If healers aren't gonna arrive in time, then his death is bound to happen. As if faith was blessing Kenji, Chikashi and Hana managed to recover in time. Hana directly arrived behind Frost, and Sucker punched him to his jaw, sending him flying. Meanwhile, Chikashi went and healed Iroh until his breathing is stable before going to others to heal. Back to the battle, Frost just recovered fast but not as fast as Beast, while brushing the blood on his grinning lip. While Hannah was just shocked when she saw her fist was frozen and she didn't even notice it until now. At the same time, while Kenji and Hannah's focus were on Frost, Beast took this chance and left the battlefield. There's no way he's gonna stay and die along with that man-man. He'll recuperate first and try to ambush Kenji in the future. There are many opportunities that he could take if he could save his life right now. So, opening another gate, he didn't even look back and went inside, leaving the Frost Monarch. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 5. CH47 while Kenji was busy with Frost, Kane and Quiratia were having their intense battle. Boom! 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 Because of Kane's speed, Quiratia was having a hard time catching up, until she resorted to a poison mist around her. Meanwhile, outside the poison mist, Kane seems to have an idea and grabbed both of her katanas and places both of their bottoms on each other, forming a straight line. With her fast speed, she rotates her katanas until they reach a speed where she can blow the mist away from her. Unfortunately, Quiratia was nowhere to be seen, and before Kane could react, a swarm of insects attacked her from all sides. Thankfully, Kane was a bit resistant to toxins, so she could still maintain herself, even after all the swarm. Ha! Getting annoyed by the swarm, she put her katanas back to their sheaths before clapping her hands in full force. Banning! All the insects were blown away, leaving only Kane and the shocked Quiratia. At first, she thought that the swarm of insects could handle her, and it seems like she underestimated Kane. HMF doesn't matter if you've wiped them away, I'm only warming up. Quiratia arrogantly remarked. Says the girl who got punched in the face. Kane smirked. Earlier during their fight, Kane managed to land a hit on her nose, breaking it till it soon heals. Quiratia growled in anger, before the swarm of insects that were surrounding Kane earlier was resurrected from the dead, and not only was it resurrected, but it also grows stronger, just by the scene of the insects growing a pair of hands and feet, then growing taller than Kane. Kane unsheathed her katana and got ready for the battle. I admire your strength, woman. Tell me what is your name? Quiratia started a chat. Aren't you supposed to tell me your name first? Instead of telling her name, Kane took the opportunity to ask who her opponent is. Quiratia frowned at the show of disrespect. HMPF, do you think I'll tell my name to a mere mortal? 
Kenny just shrugs. Well then, don't expect me to tell you my name, you aren't worthy to know it. She mocks. Croatia's face twitched in anger, before commanding the evolved insects to attack her. At the same time, Kenny used her surroundings to her advantage against the insects. She was throwing multiple cars toward the insects, and many other things using her ruler's authority. Quaresha only then realized who her opponent was when she saw the ruler's authority. She squinted her eyes. You're those despicables vessel! She hissed in anger. She didn't expect to encounter a ruler's vessel sooner after she arrived. Kenny was shocked when her opponent knew about the vessels, and there is only one thing that came to her mind. You're a monarch, aren't you? She pointed her katana towards her and asked with a glare. So what? Am I supposed to congratulate you or something? She scoffed. No, you're supposed to be running away now since I'll kill you right here and now. She gets ready into a stance, then her aura spreads towards her, while dark purple shone on her eyes. Bring it on, then, Quaratia said before attacking first with a quick punch towards Kenny's face. Unfortunately, Kenny was much faster and dodged the punch before countering her with a slice. Shing! Quaratia dodged and grinned, before spitting at Kenny. Kenny was confused about such a move, but still dodged, and when she saw that the spit landed on the ground before sizzling away. Acid? Kane muttered. Oh, it's not acid, darling. It's a toxin, Quaratia said, which confused Kane but still focuses on the battle. She needed to finish this fast, Kenji might need her help. Ha! She gripped both of her katana while using ruler's authority on her daggers that she kept on her waist. While Kane and Kenji were fighting the monarchs, the Japan Hunter Association was panicking and calling all available hunters. Unfortunately, this battle isn't something that normal hunters can handle. So, almost all hunters they sent were either killed or was sent to a nearby hospital. Back in the battle with Kenji, Hana forced open her hand, breaking the ice that froze her hand. While Kenji flew in the air, giving himself an aerial advantage. Che, you think flying will help you with this? Frost scoffed before casting a spell that covered everything in ice around them. Luckily, no one was injured since Iroh just woke up and used his fire to keep the ice away from him and the fallen hunters. An ice spear then formed on the ice floor behind Hannah, before rushing towards her. It was only then that they knew why Frost did this. It was to establish his territory around them giving himself an advantage. But Kenji doesn't mind this, he's more worried about his mother, so he didn't hesitate and threw her away from the fight while also destroying the ice spear with his bare hands. What? No. Hannah pouted and called out. She can't believe her son will do this to her. Although she just doesn't want to admit that she really can't do anything inside the ice-covered surrounding. Meanwhile, Kenji knew that he can't rely on his anti-magic suit this time, since he left it at home. He's just gonna dodge the ice attacks before knocking Frost out. Yes, just knock him out. He's not gonna kill him. Because he needed information. And getting it from the monarch himself seems to be a good idea. It's you and me now, pal. Kenji cracked his neck and his fingers before staring at Frost. Frost didn't say anything and striked first. With a quick cast, he formed an ice blizzard towards Kenji. And since it was created with magic, it is obviously fatal to him. Sometimes he wanted to curse the one who invented Superman for giving him this weakness. Even staying in the sun doesn't help him get magic immunity though it gave him a slight resistance to magic, but it is still his weakness. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore.
You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 5. CH48 Because Kenji was faster, he just dodged the blizzard and let it pass him. He then counters by lasering Frost in his chest. Luckily, Frost didn't react in time and the laser formed a hole in his chest. Frost spitted blood on the ground, before covering his chest in ice. Although he could heal, it's not as fast as Beast, so he has to delay it for a while so he could reserve his strength for the fight. Where the F asterisk CK are they? He's talking about the Plague Monarch and the Beast Monarch. Earlier, he saw the Beast Monarch fighting off against Kenji, so he got confident that they could handle him. Unfortunately, Beast actually used him as a means to escape. Not only that, he sensed that someone seems to be fighting with Quiratia, so she was a bit delayed. Fine, I'll handle this myself. Frost expanded his lungs and inhaled deeply before releasing it all at once. F-W-O-S-S-H-H-H Similar to Kenji's ice breath, but stronger. A wave of ice formed and rushed towards Kenji at unimaginable speeds. Meanwhile, Kenji doesn't fathom and sliced it with his heat vision as it usually does. However, what he didn't expect was a horde of ice monsters, rushing up to him without a single sign of humanity. So he could form his own army? I'm a bit jealous. It is indeed true. Having your own strong and loyal army is every man's dream. Who wouldn't want to command someone strong? He does. He then clenched his fist and punched the first monster that came up to him before punching the second one. Soon, a flurry of punches was being thrown out in every direction, sending ice shards flying everywhere. Don't forget about me! Suddenly, as if an alarm was sent on his head. Kenji dodged in time as the ground where he was supposed to be was crushed. He squinted his eyes, I thought he escaped. That's right, the one who just attacked him was actually Beast who came back. I've been watching from a distance, and I could see that Frost has the advantage against you. Beast grins like a madman, but this time, his appearance was slowly changing. His grin stays the same but his hair and body are not. His hair is slowly turning white, while white fur was spreading on his chest. Meanwhile, Kenji doesn't even get a single breathing space, because of the ice monsters that seem to be multiplying infinitely. He kills one, and another two take its place, like a hydra. The good news is that the monsters were weak and the bad news is that there is still the Frost Monarch and the Evolving Beast Monarch, standing on the sidelines. Looks like he's gonna need an army. I wonder how much longer can you hold on? He heard the voice of the Frost Monarch, and before he knew it, sharp ice shards were raining down on him repeatedly. Fortunately, because of this, the ice monsters were now broken into pieces and since Frost was busy raining down ice shards on him, he's not creating any more ice monsters. But now, he must focus on the ice rain. Due to Kenji's speed, he's easily dodging and breaking the raining shards of ice, much to the annoyance of the Frost Monarch. I'll handle him! Behind him, Beast emerged in his full white wolf form, with his mouth wide open, ready to bite him off while his claws were stretched out, striking him. Kenji doesn't have a choice but to block his claws using his forearms, praying that his limbs won't be cut off. Slash Splat Boom Because of their fight, the destruction around them has caused billions of worth of collateral damage. And because the mansion where they fought was near Tokyo, the fight has escalated there quickly forcing the civilians to evacuate immediately. If someone were to see this, all they'll see is smashed buildings, broken cars, shattered roads, and some splattered blood of some civilians that haven't evacuated in time. Some of them are even hunters that were about to fight alongside Kenji. Meanwhile, because Kenji was hit by beast, 
he was thrown back at sonic speeds before colliding with a random building. Boom! Specks of dust surround the area where Kenji was thrown out. I'm curious on how can a human have such power? I'm guessing that he must be the vessel of the Star Monarch. Frost stated his guess. Once the dust settled, Kenji was shown, slowly getting up, while four slash wounds were seen on his chest, overflowing with his blood. You're right, I'm curious about it too, Kenji replied to Frost, before wiping off the blood on his lips. The same red light shone on Kenji's eyes, indicating that he was about to release a hot red beam. Frost and Beast immediately tried to back off to dodge the beams, but they were a step too late, and luckily, only Beast was hit. Boom! Beast used his hands to block the beams. Although he managed to block it, the heat and the burning sensation spreads on his whole arm. He felt like he dipped his hand in the sun. Because he was busy on the beams, he didn't notice Kenji slowly walking toward him. While the Frost Monarch was amazed at Kenji, he couldn't believe that a vessel of the Star Monarch could be this strong. They'd been fighting for an hour, and Kenji was still standing still and holding them off. But seeing that Kenji and Beast were at a stalemate, he decided to intervene by casting another torrent of ice shards but this time, it is much bigger and stronger. Kenji was forced to stop his assault to avoid all the ice shards. Beast took this chance to counterattack by slashing at Kenji again. Since Kenji was struck by him earlier, he has learned his lesson and dodged the slash before slowly floating upwards until he was a meter taller than Beast before headbutting him very hard. Beast felt pain in his head, before he was thrown to the ground and skidded back until he was shot through a random building wall. Boom! Now it was Frost's turn. Turning around, Kenji was met with an ice dagger that almost stabbed his eye, and the one holding the dagger was Frost. Fortunately, he was faster than Frost, and he could perceive his moves in slow motion, though it is still fast. So he just sidestepped and punched him on his ice hole covered chest, shattering it into pieces. The time seems to have resumed and Frost was now kneeling on the ground while forming another ice on his chest. Healing takes his mana and stamina, so he has to cover it with ice to prevent it from healing while at the same time, preventing it from taking his mana and stamina. While Kenji was busy with the fight, Kane and Quiratia were having an intense fight. Neither of them was gaining an advantage over each other. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 4. CH-49 Green hand-like structures were floating everywhere and kept on attacking Kane. Thanks to Kane's speed, she's keeping up with Quiratia but the question is, for how long? Since either of them could hit each other, the only way one of them could win is to wait for their opponent to be exhausted. However, there is still another way to defeat her opponent and that way is to finish the fight as fast as possible. Kane could use her speed as an advantage to kill Quiresha before she could react. But how? Kane can't get close to her because of the green hand-like structures that are blocking her way. Not to mention, the civilians who turned into some kind of insect undead or something are also attacking her. This bastard. She's using the corpses of these civilians. She's a psycho. Kane was disgusted by this. This is the first time she has seen someone who uses corpses as a means to fight. To her, only a cold-hearted woman could do this. However, Kane's thoughts were disrupted when the floating green hand managed to bypass her defense and managed to catch her. Oh dear. Looks like I've got you now. Quiratia mocked her. Oh yeah? Kane sneered at her. 
Before Croatia could figure out what makes Kenny confident, she suddenly felt a force on her back, making her smash towards the ground in force. Looks like I'm not late. Behind Croatia, Hannah was smirking while her fist was producing smoke. What are you doing here, Hannah-san? Kane was confused. She thought that she was supposed to be with Kenji. Huvuvu, Kenshan doesn't want his mother anymore. Tears were streaming down her face as she said that. Meanwhile, Kane just sweat dropped at seeing her cry just because of a simple thing. So she sighed and said, Well, thank you for the save, Hannah-san. Of course. Anything for my daughter-in-law. She smiled and hugged her arm. While Kenny blushed when Hannah called her daughter-in-law. Who doesn't want to be called daughter-in-law by their lover's parents? Well, well, another one hot dash. Beside them, Quaresha was slowly healing while speaking. However, she was interrupted when a katana came fast towards her chest, piercing it through. Slitchk. The katana penetrated her chest until it goes through her chest. Lesson number one, strike first. With a dangerous glint in her eyes, Kane stated what she learned from Kenji. Before Koresha could heal, another katana penetrated her but this time, it almost penetrated her neck. Unfortunately, Koresha manages to react fast enough to avoid her impending doom. With her whole upper body tilted to the side, the katana flew fast past her. Swoosh. However, because she was too busy on the katana, she didn't perceive the incoming fist towards her face. Bam! Koresha was thrown away in full force before colliding with a building. Strike hard. Kane with her fist out menacingly said. She then levitated both of her katanas back to her hand before barraging the place where Quaresha was thrown with slashes from her katana. Show no mercy. She continued. Because of the barrage, clouds of dust covered the area. So Kene has to wait for the dust to settle until she makes another move. However, it seems like Quaresha wasn't even bothered by the dust when the familiar green hand emerged from the dust and flew towards Kane. Kane dodged and watched as Quaresha emerged next from the clouds of dust. Kane could see that she was injured both in her face and her chest while glaring heavily at her. You dare destroy my FAC dash. Unfortunately, she didn't manage to finish her sentence when Hannah appeared in front of her and jabbed her in her throat. Cluck! Quaresha shouted in pain while her tongue was outside because of her hurting throat. Then Hannah followed by another punch towards her left face and another one to her right face. Boom! Boom! Koresha just felt a little bit dizzy from the punch, however the same can't be said about her face. It turns out that her healing was connected to either her mana or her stamina because from what Hannah can see, Koresha's healing was a bit slower compared to earlier. So, Hannah could see that Quaresha's face was and it was healing slowly, so she took this chance and punched her again and again. She wanted to finish this fight early, so she could finally rest and so she could reunite with her son and husband. Remembering that her husband was with her son gave her a relief. However, darling, if something happened to our son, you'll sleep on the couch tonight. On the battlefield, Chikashi who was healing an injured hunter, felt a sudden chill on his spine, so he looked around and saw no danger, except for Kenji's opponents. Because the celebration earlier was past midnight, Chikashi could see that the sun was almost rising, and a few minutes from now, the sun will be completely exposed. Even though Kenji could handle the two monarchs just fine, their magic interrupts him from finishing the fight early. However, Kenji was actually confused about why he was a bit weaker compared to Superman even though he was bathing in the sun in his free time. If he were the original Superman, then he could defeat them before they could counter him. This is something Kenji should study later after this battle. Maybe his Kryptonian blood is diluted? Or perhaps he isn't actually a Kryptonian? There are so many questions in his mind right now. 
but he should focus on the battle first. What are you thinking about? Worried about your little girlfriend. Don't worry, I'm sure the insect monarch could handle her just fine. Frost mocked him and sneered, trying to distract Kenji by poking his emotions. However, contrary to his expectations, instead of getting worried and mad, instead Kenji just smiled at him. What's so funny, you damn human? It seems like Frost got irritated when he saw him smile, so he instead increased his ice magic, which consumes more of his mana. As for why Kenji smiled, of course, he already knew about Kane's battle, he has super hearing, remember? Not only that, but he also completely trusts her that she can defeat her opponent. Why? Well, first of all, he himself already tasted her strength, so she knew how strong she is. Lastly, his purposely threw his mother into her position so they both could help each other to defeat their opponent. So he's not worried about Kene at all. Now all that's left is to defeat the two idiots and go back home with Kane and if possible, relieve some stress. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me www.patreon.com slash slimesage 4. CH50 While Kenji was ready to finish off his enemies, Kane and Hana were also about to be done if it wasn't for Koresha's final transformation. Her whole being screams danger and poison, she was glowing green everywhere, while at the same time spreading poison mist. Kane and Hana were having a hard time defeating especially since she has an army of undead insects made up of civilians and some dead hunters. You insolent bastards! Koresha angrily shouted while fending off with Kane using her newly shaped claws. Meanwhile, Hannah was busy with the undead insects that she didn't have time to help Kane. Not only that but she was also overwhelmed due to vast numbers. Kane felt her exhaustion so she decided to finish this in one move, but she needed help. Luckily, someone manages to arrive in time. Boom! Who? Koresha angrily asks, she thought that another ant has decided to come up to her and die. Sorry, sorry. So, what did I miss? The dust settles which reveals Thomas Andre with his full enhancement form except for his head who was smoking a cigarette. He heard about the ongoing destruction in Japan, so as a friend of Kenji, he decided to help. Another one? Koresha gulped in a bit of fear when he sensed who arrived. She was facing three vessels of rulers, something that even Frost and Beast cannot face. Not to mention her, who was the weakest among the three. Let me help. Thomas said before spitting the cigarette out of his mouth before his face was covered by his enhancement. Meanwhile, Quaratia was thinking of escaping, however, before she could think of any ideas, she suddenly felt a familiar authority. Thomas, who caught Quaratia in his ruler's authority, was about to attack her when his authority was suddenly broken and Quaratia didn't arrive at his position as he expected. Good thing his authority is a bit weaker so I could cancel it. Quaratia sweated lightly, so she immediately backed away from the three vessels. At the same time, Thomas, Hannah, and Kane gathered together, facing Quaratia and her undead army. You were late, Kane told Thomas, who just scratched the back of his neck. I was busy with some matters, sorry, he said. Kane just shook her head and focused on the current situation. From what she observed, their chances of winning have risen past 50%. The remaining percentage would be when the other monarchs decided to join the fight. Not only that, but she also has a mission to eliminate the Shadow and Star Monarch. She didn't even have a clue on who they are. However, Quaratia's next words seemed to have caught her interest. 
you pests dare to interrupt me from killing the vessel of the star monarch while he is at his weakest. Quaratia angrily said. Star monarch? Do you know who the vessel of star monarch is? Kane unconsciously asks her. She wanted to finish her mission as soon as possible so she could start a normal life with Kenji without any worries. Ha! You don't know? Quaratia laughed in delight, which annoyed Kane. Once she was done, she looked back at where the fight between Kenji and the two monarchs is taking place. I think he'd be dead sooner or later. She snorted. Confused about where she was looking, she also looked behind Quaratia and remembered that it is the place where her boyfriend is fighting with the big guy earlier. Don't tell me? A thought struck her mind. She wanted to refuse it as much as possible, but the possibility of it is higher than 60%. She wished that it isn't real and Kenji isn't the vessel of the Star Monarch. If he really is, then she has no choice but to side with him even if she will betray the rulers who gave her the power to stand side by side with Kenji. Even if it means taking her life. Just the thought of killing her boyfriend to fulfill her mission makes her regret that she accepted the deal of the rulers. She was blinded by the goal of standing side by side with Kenji, not knowing about the countless possibilities. But there is no point crying over spilled milk, all she could do now is to swallow it up and bear the consequences. With her katana in her hand, she muttered her last words towards Quaratia. Thank you for telling me. Soon she disappeared in her place and Quaratia could see her blur, speeding toward her. She tried to move and dodge, however, something heavy seems to hold her in her place. She tried cancelling it but it seems to be impossible, and it was at this moment that she saw Hannah and Thomas, with their glowing auras, along with Kane. It means that three vessels of rulers were using their authority to hold her down. If it was only one of them, then she is confident to cancel it but three against her? That is impossible. And before she knew it, slash, 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 slash x20, with Kane's two katana rapidly slashing her whole body into pieces. She is bound to die right now. And no, this is not posse dash. She tried to break free once again, however. The concept of death kept pulling her away from the mortal world. With her vision darkening, she mutters one last word. No way. Soon, she started disappearing until she disappears completely. Meanwhile, Kenne and Hannah sat on the floor, breathing heavily. They'd been fighting for hours, and it was finally time to rest. Because Thomas just arrived, he didn't even try or break a sweat, so he went and called his guild members for backup. He could feel the intensifying battle up ahead, so he need all possible manpower right now. Meanwhile, back in the battle with Kenji. After annoying the Frost Monarch, Kenji tried to finish this as soon as he can, however. A sudden increase in coldness penetrated even Kenji's nigh-indestructible skin. You may be strong for a human, however, a human is still a human. A block of huge, tall ice suddenly emerged from where the Frost Monarch is. Kenji fought back the coldness, so he could clearly see that Frost seems to have some kind of power up. You're too confident in your body, human. It revealed Frost, without his cloth, and he seems to have de-aged and was now revealing his lean, yet muscular body. Get some clothes, Kenji mutters before preparing to throw another beam of laser. However, before he could release it, he suddenly felt pain in his chest. He stopped what he was doing and saw Frost in front of him, while a trident weapon was stabbing him in his chest. Splat. Kenji spitted out a mouthful of blood, while Frost grinned wildly. Do you think you are strong enough to compete with us, the true monarchs? You are incomplete. The Star Monarch hasn't even helped you in your situation. He laughed loudly while saying this. Meanwhile, 
Chikashi saw this and yelled his name in worry and fear. Kenji! Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 4. CH51 Kenji focused himself and held the trident that impaled him, and tried to pull it out with his remaining strength. Even though he was impaled by a magic weapon, which is his weakness, Kenji still has some strength to pull the weapon out and kicked Frost in front of him. Meanwhile, Frost just put his hand towards the place where Kenji is about to hit, blocking it but he still skidded backward. Frost stared at his bruised hand in surprise. Just so you know, he used all of his remaining mana to increase his strength greatly, and Kenji who was impaled by him could still push him away. Impressive, Frost mutters in amazement. Even though Kenji is immortal, his body seems to be like a god. Yes, Kenji is possibly the vessel of the Star Monarch, but he still hasn't fully integrated with the Star Monarch himself. Thanks to the sun that is nourishing him, Kenji could feel his stamina growing back, while his impaled abdomen is slowly healing itself. So he stood up and decided to take this battle to another place, somewhere, where civilians and hunters will receive no harm from the battle. Speeding up, he arrived in front of Frost who just arrogantly waited for him there and just stood still. No matter what you do, mortal, you will never be able to defeat the true monarchs. Frost sneered. But Kenji has other plans. He grabbed both of Frost's arms with his two hands and flew far away up into space. As for the beast monarch, he trusts that his father could hold him off for a while. Speeding up in the air, Frost was confused about what Kenji wanted to do. He then noticed that they were going far up in space, and he just sneered. Do you think you could defeat me by taking me to space? Dream on. He then raised his fist and punched Kenji in the face, repeatedly. Meanwhile, Kenji just ignored the valley of punches and focused on bringing themselves into space. Soon, they finally arrived in space, with Frost and him just floating in space. Do you think I need air? Frost mocked him. But Kenji wasn't phased by this. What do you think defeats ice? Kenji spoke. As for could they speak in space? Kenji doesn't know, nor does Frost too. What do you mean? Frost was confused by as he being asked a question. Though he knew the answer, which was fire or extreme heat. But he bet that no one has the firepower to melt his ice. As if reading his mind, Kenji spoke up. I know that no one has the power to melt your ice. He then continued while pointing behind his back. But he can. Frost looked over where he is pointing and saw the sun in its full glory. Having a bad feeling about this, he was about to retreat when he was grabbed by Kenji once again and flew directly towards the sun. Unhand me, mortal! He tried everything for Kenji to release him and even tried to use ice. But because they're already near the sun, it just instantly melts much to Frost's growing fear. No! No! Frost was fear-stricken while staring at the sun. He could feel the heat emanating off it, slowly licking his icy skin. Because his whole body was composed of ice particles, his skin could instantly melt off once it came in contact with something hot that his body can't withstand. And that is the sun, who is killing him right now. And oh, oh, oh! Without even hesitation, Kenji dived right through the sun, with frost, melting in his arms. The first one to melt was his skin, then his flesh, and finally, his bones. While Kenji watched him die slowly, and painfully, without any reaction. Because he was wearing a normal suit earlier, 
It obviously can't stand the heat of the sun and it also melted, leaving Kenji in his birthday suit. While at the same time, he could feel his growing strength just by being in the center of the sun. While Kenji was bringing frost towards the sun, back on Earth, Beast decided to target Chikashi since Kenji was gone. Oh, hell nah. Chikashi shook his head and slowly backed away. He knows how strong the monarchs are, and he's not gonna risk his life fighting against one without any helper. He hasn't even fulfilled his bucket list yet. No way he's gonna get himself killed in here. So without hesitation, he retreated, while Beast followed suit, not caring about the hunters that are trying to be quiet in fear of being noticed by him. And seeing that Beast followed Chikashi, the hunter sighed in relief, while at the same time, guilt. Because if it wasn't for Chikashi then they'll be dead by now. And when Chikashi needed them the most, they kept quiet in fear of dying. But out of all of them, Iroh, who just woke up and saw what happened, was the first one to stand and followed where Beast and Chikashi had run to. Soon, others followed too, not being able the fact that they just left their savior on his own. However, not all of them followed, almost half of them decided to get away from the battlefield and escape. While some decided to retreat and call for more backup. This is the first time they encountered someone this strong, who could even force an A-rank like Chikashi to flee. Not to mention, they watched earlier how the blue-skinned guy stabbed Kenji in his abdomen, showing the might of the enemies. But that doesn't mean they will cower and hide until the situation is solved. The reason they became a hunter was to protect their home, planet, and their family. Although some just wanted to become famous, and then involve themselves in politics. Soon, the battlefield that was full of battles was submerged in silence, until Kenji came and landed on the floor. Where are they? Kenji confusedly asks. He just went away for a few minutes, and when he came back, they were all already gone. H help. Kenji heard a very silent mutter. If it wasn't for his super hearing, then he'll probably miss it. So he turned and lifted a huge stone that kept an old man underneath. Are you okay? Kenji asks. I'm fine, thank you. The old man then tried to stand up but fails. Kenji just assisted him and asks. I'm looking for my father. Have you seen him? Yes, yes, he ran that way followed by the mighty beast and some hunters. Thank you for your help, but I think your father needs your help more than I do. Thank you, young man. The old man then slowly walked in a distance until he disappears. Seeing that the old man would be fine, he dashed towards the location where the old man pointed at while at the same time, using his super hearing to locate their exact location. Boom! Boom! At a distance, Kenji heard an ongoing battle and rushed towards the place. Once he arrived, he saw Beast and Chikashi having their showdown, assisted by Iroh and some still standing hunters. Meanwhile, with Beast's sharp claws, he kept breaking the barriers that Chikashi kept putting up to protect himself. Once he destroyed another barrier that he put up, Beast's other claw was already in the position to strike and kill Chikashi. However, before he could do that, he felt a force ramming him like a speeding bullet train. Boom! Both Beast's limbs were cut off, while his chest was bleeding, courtesy of Kenji who showed no mercy. And before Beast could regenerate, he felt a sudden force towards his head, cracking it and dizzying him. Then a kick to his ribs threw him far away just as fast as a father who bought some milk. Bam! He felt his head being grabbed and continuously being slammed on the floor creating a huge crater and causing a 9.6 magnitude earthquake around the vicinity. When Kenji was done, he saw the disfigured face of Beast, who was already healing very fast. Not only that, but his arms have also regenerated, which Beast used to slash towards Kenji's chest, who stepped back and gave him a spartan kick to his chest. Beast was once again thrown far away 
but he used this chance to escape by slashing the space behind him, creating a gate-like portal that he used to escape. However, Kenji foresaw all of this and immediately dashed towards the gate, along with Beast. Once outside the portal, which was green scenery, full of trees, grass, and some animals. Ha! 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 Good thing I escaped in time. Beast, who was breathing heavily due to fear and exhaustion, finally sighed in relief, not knowing the impending doom just right behind him. Are you sure about that? He suddenly heard someone say behind him, making him jerk his head back, just to see his greatest nightmare staring right through him. Hey, uh. Beast just left his jaw hanging, while trying to form some words. He doesn't know whether he should beg for his life or laugh at the sight of Kenji, but naked with his little brother hanging like an elephant's trunk. Of course, Kenji doesn't care about what he said, and directly grabbed both of his shoulders, while his eyes glowed in red. Zoom! Red beams came out of his eye sockets and directly penetrated Beast's eyes, down towards the ground, destroying everything in its path, including Beast's insides. Once he was done, Kenji finally stopped and gave himself some time to admire his piece of art, which is a jumbled mesh of flesh. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 4. CH52 after defeating Beast, Kenji finally has the time to take a look at his current surroundings. What he saw are just a bunch of trees, insects, grass, and some wild animals. He was about to go back when he suddenly felt pain in his heart as if he was having a heart attack. Not knowing what was happening, Kenji tried to fight back and stay awake or tried to use his power, but to no avail, he seems to be crippled and he can't move. Before his vision turns black, he heard a voice. It is time. And before he knew it, he finally fell unconscious. When Kenji finally opens his eyes, Kenji saw that he was floating in space, surrounded by unknown stars and planets. Where am I? He tried to look around. Perhaps he could find Earth. But it seems like he can't use his supervision, where he could zoom his sight. Not only that, but he also tried to fly around or use his powers. But it looks like he lost his abilities and he can't do anything. It's no use. He heard a heavy voice behind him, forcing him to look behind. And there he saw, a huge humanoid being, but instead, his body was made up of small stars and black lines outlining the shape of his body. Basically, he looks like a compressed universe inside a body. What are you? Instead of asking who he was, curiosity overwhelms Kenji which led to him asking what he was instead of who. I am known by many names, but the most famous is the Star Monarch. The galaxy being introduced himself which shocked Kenji up to his core. When Kenji heard that he was the Star Monarch, countless thoughts were running on Kenji's mind trying to figure out why the Star Monarch personally meet him. However, there is only one that fits the reason. Which is he is the vessel of the Star Monarch. It's pretty obvious if you use your brain for once after all. He could get strong by bathing in the sun, which is a star. Then there is also the fact that, whenever the Star Monarch is mentioned, there is something inside him that seems to be reacting. You may call me Star Monarch, but I prefer the one you used to call me back then. The Star Monarch spoke. Hearing what he said, Kenji was once again confused. What the hell does he mean by the one you used to call me back then? As far as he knows, he doesn't even know who he is, and lastly, he just met him like five minutes earlier. You may not know who I am now, but you know me very well in your past life. 
After that, the star monarch slowly started changing in appearance. At first, Kenji was confused but as time passed, his face slowly contorted in shock, while he was pointing his finger toward him. See Caesar? That's right, the appearance that the star monarch changed into was actually his longtime furry friend Caesar. But how? No wait, you're not Caesar! You're just pretending to be him, just by copying his appearance, right? Kenji refused to believe the fake Caesar. I knew that you'd say that. If you don't believe me, then how can I prove it to you? Caesar said. All right then, what was the last word you said to me before you died? Kenji asks. Thank you. With a warm expression, Caesar said his last words to him. Feeling his emotions unstable, Kenji could see Caesar's past and the present overlapping each other. The way he said it, his emotion, his expression, everything is exactly the same. The same goes for how he said it. It comes from the heart. Only someone who is truly thankful and loves him could achieve that kind of expression. Caesar Kenji wanted to cry his heart out however, he was currently a soul and he doesn't have a body to produce tears. So without speaking, he tried his best to get close to him and try to hug him very tightly. Caesar, seeing his intention, didn't let Kenji move and instead, he went to Kenji himself before hugging him. How have you been, friend? Kenji asked him, wanting to know what happened to him. It's a long story, my friend. So I'll keep it short. A random god was impressed by the intelligence I showed and gave me a chance to be reborn as the star monarch of a universe. Caesar started narrating his story before continuing. At first I was confused, but then my supposed creator, the absolute being, taught me everything I needed to know. Out of all the monarchs and rulers, I was his favorite. Even though he was cold on the outside, he actually cared about us. But those damn rulers decided to rebel and kill him. This time, Caesar seems to be angry, and the whole space seems to shake. I would never forget them, F asterisk king traitors. Caesar continued to rage on before calming down. So, what has this got to do with me? As much as Kenji wanted to calm him down, he can't seem he can't move. Asterisk, Psy Asterisk, you have a crucial position in this war, old friend. Caesar sighed before getting serious. With a confused look, Kenji gestures for him to continue, which Caesar did. Before the rulers rebelled, the Absolute Being gave me a portion of his power. He said that I can only give it to someone worthy and someone I could trust. Caesar said before casting him a serious look. As if solving the piece of the puzzle, Kenji finally gets the gist of why he was in this world. Then you gave me the dash dot. Yes. However, I couldn't let others know about it, so the only way to disguise it was to make you my vessel at the same time. That's why you get stronger the more you bath in the sun, as it is part of my power to get stronger under any stars. But what about the Superman powers? Was it part of your powers too? Kenji asks. It's just a bonus I decided to give you since I knew how much you like Superman and DC. Caesar smiled and said. So I'm not really Superman? Kenji seemed saddened about it. Well, considering that you resemble everything about him, minus the kryptonite weakness, then you could be the Superman of this universe. Caesar said, however, there is one part that seems to help Kenji recall something. Wait. If I'm not Superman, then how come I have a weakness against magic? Kenji was dying to know the answer since he heard about what Caesar said. Oh yeah, about that, I purposely added that because if I didn't then you'll become invincible and you'll never die. Caesar explained. Getting confused about this. Did Caesar perhaps want him to die early? For what, so he could join him in heaven sooner? As if reading his mind, Caesar immediately tried to clear the confusion. No, that's not what I meant. 
What I meant is that you needed to die first so I could personally meet you by taking away your soul. But despite that, you still managed to win against two monarchs, so I have no choice but to personally kill you by directing all of the energy in your body to overload your heart. Caesar calmly explained. If that's the case, then why not just kill me when needed instead of giving me no resistance of magic, making my life a bit harder? Kenji grumbled. Well, tell me. If you have a chance to kill your friend, then will you do it? Caesar asks. No, Kenji answers, after all, why would you kill your friend even if you have the chance? See, that's the point. It's hard for me to kill you myself, but because of the circumstances, I have no choice but to kill you myself. Anyway, when you inherit the absolute being's powers, I think you'll get resistance or possibly be immune towards magic. Caesar finally finished explaining the situation. I see. If so, then can you tell me the purpose of all of this? Kenji finally asked the million-dollar question that has been bugging him off. I am here to help you fully awaken the portion of the absolute being's power, Caesar said. Wait, how about me being your vessel? Kenji asks. Hold on, I'm about to get to that part. Because you'll awaken the absolute being's power, then you being my vessel will obviously be enhanced. Perhaps it could even make you a separate star monarch, which means there will be two star monarchs from now on. Hearing what he said seems to shock me to my core. If what he said is true, then I could possibly surpass him. After all, I'll have the full power of him, along with the power of the Absolute Being. I wonder what kind of power the Absolute Being has. Let's not make this long. Your family is waiting and they still need you. So, close your eyes. Caesar hurriedly said. Kenji did as he told and before he could react, he felt himself falling back on earth, as if he was a comet or something. Opening his eyes, he saw something akin to a kaleidoscope, but instead, it was moving very fast, making him a bit dizzy. Before he knew it, he woke up in his body, while huffing heavily. What the F asterisk CK was that? He unconsciously shouted. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage 5. CH53 Kenji tried to deduce where the hell he is, but then he remembered his meeting with Caesar and before that. Oh, right. I was in the middle of nowhere when I chased after that beast. Kenji rubs his forehead while remembering what happened. After all, dying and being brought back to life is no joke. Kenji could still feel his death and how he died. He shivers at the mere thought of that. He didn't expect he'll experience death once again sooner. But still, his journey to death gave him many benefits, like meeting his old friend who became a god or monarch. Then, he was given the portion of the power of the Absolute Being, who was said to be the creator of everything, including the rulers and monarch. But first, he needed to get back to his family, since he's sure as hell that both his parents and Kane are worrying over him as hell. If he didn't come back on time, then he's afraid that he'll sleep on the couch tonight. So without further ado, he flew away faster than the speed of light, arriving back on the battlefield in less than a second. He was met with his parents, Kane, and some hunters either helping the injured or repairing the damage done by the earlier battle. Mom, Dad, Kane, Kenji called out to them, and they turned their heads, just to see him. Kenchan. His mother, Hannah was the first one to react and rushed through him, hugging him very tightly. Hey, mom, look, I'm fine. Having said that, he then flexed his muscles a bit. However, when he turned to look at his dad and Kane, he saw Kane looking at him with a blushed face while his dad seems to point toward his body. 
As if a lightning strike him, he realized that he was naked and hugging his mom. Looking down, his nightmares became true and he saw his naked body pressing on his mother. W. Wait, mom. I'm naked. Kenji blushed and tries to push his mother away. So what? I've seen your naked body a thousand times when you were a kid. Not letting go of him. Instead, she even tightens the hug, she said. But that was when I was a kid, Kenji said, still pushing his mother away. Though he's not really trying since he doesn't want to turn his mother into meat paste, is he? Even if you think that you're older now, doesn't mean I do. To me, you're still my baby boy. Caressing his face, Hannah with teary-eyed, lovingly said to him. Meanwhile, Kenji was already immune to this, so he just sighed and let his mother do what she wants. It's not like he doesn't want this he was thankful that he was reborn into a loving family, though sometimes they're annoying but still loving parents. So, what happened while I'm gone? Ignoring his doting mother, Kenji decided to ask Chikashi and Kane. Well, after the battle is done, the government, along with the Japan Hunters Association and some guilds, they managed to repair some parts of the city while tending to the wounded. Unfortunately, the casualties this time is a bit huge and now the media and news stations were doing their best to calm the citizens. Chikashi explained to him. Hearing that the casualties were a bit huge, Kenji felt a pang in his heart, while at the same time felt enraged towards the monarchs. If it wasn't for them then all of this wouldn't happen and many people will go back to their families. But because of this, they were dead and their families must be searching and worried for them now. Is that all? Kenji asks. Actually, national rank hunter, Thomas Andre came here and helped us defeat the insect monarch. This time, it was Kane who spoke. At first, Kenji was shocked but recovered soon, since Kane is alive and there is no point in being shocked. Besides, he already knew that she was fighting someone, courtesy of his super hearing, but he just didn't know who. Really? Then how are you? Are you fine? Still, his worry towards his girlfriend outweighs his shock, so he asks her worriedly. I'm fine, thanks to Hannah-san and Andre-san, we managed to defeat that insect. Kane just waves her hand in casual, while saying this. Sighing in relief, Kenji nodded and felt something heavy lifted off his chest. Thomas is here? Where is he? Now that she mentions it, Kenji tries to look around. I'm here, my friend. Quite a chaos you throw yourself in. Hearing his voice from his side, Kenji turns to look and saw him there walking up to him while a cigarette is in his mouth. Oh, hey. Waving his hand, Kenji greeted him, while Thomas greeted him back. Grinning, Thomas puffed a smoke before saying, I think you'll be promoted again, but there is nothing more higher than national rank, though. I think they'll figure it out, he replied. Kenji knew well that he would be promoted after this. After all, he is just two monsters who could defeat tens of S-rankers while at the same time can cause such massive destruction. If it weren't for Kenji, then this day might be known throughout the future as human's second greatest calamity. Not only that, the troublesome media and reporters would most likely barrage him with a bunch of questions tomorrow. It was then that he noticed that his mother finally let go of him, so without saying anything, he immediately went back home and wore proper clothes, so he was not naked in the public again. After all, he noticed earlier that a bunch of female hunters were blushing whenever they look at him, and he's not dense like a Japanese protagonist, to not notice it. Besides, he has a girlfriend already, and he could feel her glare at him earlier. Then, he went back to his earlier position. All this happened in just a second. To others, they just felt wind waves hitting them before seeing Kenji finally having his clothes. Thankfully, Kane's glare disappeared once he went back, but he didn't sigh in relief, he knew that later at home, he will be punished. 
dash underscore 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 you can visit my p at tree and to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me www.patreon.com slash slimesage 5. ch54 Anyway, now that the monsters are gone, I think I should get going now. I still have many matters to attend to. Saying that Thomas turns around and walked away. Once he was gone, Kenji finally has the time to look around to see how much destruction their fight caused. Large rubbles were being towed by various trucks while the bigger one was being handled by helicopters. He could also see some hunters and civilians being healed by mages. Then some guilds were helping in cleaning and reconstruction. He also saw some dead bodies being transported in an ambulance. Sadness can be seen in Kenji's eyes. Although he used to be a soldier and killed people, that doesn't mean he is cold-hearted. While Kenji was looking at the destruction, Kane was quietly staring at his back. Thinking about what she discovered earlier, Kane wanted to punch her past self for accepting the mission. Although she doesn't know who the Shadow Monarch is, she knew fully well that Kenji is the Star Monarch. After all, if he isn't then how come he is so strong, much stronger than her? If only she could turn back the time, then she'll definitely won't go to that Jeju Island. Kane, are you okay? Snapping her out of her thoughts, Kane looked at who distracted her and saw Kenji looking at her with worry. It was then that she noticed that her cheeks were wet, indicating that she was crying. Wiping her eyes using her sleeve, she nodded and said, Yeah, I'm okay. I see. If there is any problem dash dot. Hey, Kenji. Can we talk privately later? Once she finished wiping her tears, she didn't let Kenji finish his sentence and directly asks him. Knowing that something was wrong, Kenji nodded seriously while preparing to annihilate whoever dared to make his future wife cry. Soon, Kenji decided to help along with Chikashi, Hana, and Kane. With Kenji helping them, the cleanup was finished much earlier, and all injured were safely and successfully delivered to a nearby hospital. Kenji doesn't even break a sweat to him, this is just breathing. Once they were done, Kenji tried to convince his parent to accompany them back home, but they refused, so Kenji doesn't insist anymore and directly went home with Kane in his arms. When he arrived home, Kenji didn't even bother fixing the land where he harshly landed and went towards to their room. Inside there, Kenji finally asks Kane a question that has been bugging him off. Now tell me what's wrong. At fidgeting, then inhaled and exhaled heavily before looking at Kenji in his eyes. You know about the mission that the rulers gave me, right? Nodding his head, Kenji replied. Yes, to eliminate the vessels of the Shadow and Starmon dash dot. However, Kenji didn't continue his sentence when he realized what her mission really means. Realizing that he's the vessel of the Star Monarch, and it is Kane's mission to kill him. Looking at her, without even an ounce of fear, Kenji asks him, Since you must know that I am the vessel of the Star Monarch, which side are you on? Not even surprised that Kenji knew about it, Kane replied without hesitation, I'll side with you, even if I have to betray the ones who gave me this strength. Nodding his head in anticipation, Kenji knew already what Kane's answer will be. Now what will you do? Sooner or later the rulers will know that you betrayed them, in fact, I'm not even surprised if they knew about it now. However, it seems like Kenji was right, when a light blinded the room and soon revealed the brightest fragment of brilliant light, in the room, floating while looking at them. The wariness appeared in Kenji's eyes while it is glowing red. He was ready to kill this ruler right here, right now, if ever he did something suspicious. Seeing the wariness in Kenji's eyes, 
brightest fragment of brilliant light immediately raised both of his hands and said, I mean you no harm. I'm just here to tell you guys something. What is it? If it is something that doesn't interest me, then consider yourself dead, since you're not getting out of here alive without losing a limb or two. Kenji threatens. The reason for the threat was that Kenji remembers the frustration and sadness in Caesar's eyes earlier. So Kenji doesn't have a good impression of the rulers. To him, they are those beings who only sided in justice and order, so they could assert their dominance over the others. Kenji believes that nothing stays good in this world, even him. Not taking his threat seriously, the ruler placed his hand down and finally speak. Your mission has changed, you wide dash. Before the ruler could finish his sentence, Kenji cut him off. There will be no more missions from now on. Squinting his eyes, the ruler asks. What do you mean by that? Mortal. Finally showing his true colors, brightest fragment of brilliant light didn't bother hiding his true colors and said to Kenji with a glare. From now on, she will not be your puppet anymore. Kenji wasn't afraid of a mere ruler and showed off his strength by releasing his aura. Reddish with a mix of orange was flowing around Kenji while glaring back at him. Before the ruler could react, he was thrown away like a ragdoll before disappearing into particles. But before he truly disappeared, he left one last message. You'll regret this. Before extending his hand forward, and a white-colored orb was taken off of Kane's chest before it goes back to him. Meanwhile, when Kane saw the orb of light taken from her, she felt the previous strength she had was gone and was replaced by her previous strength before she became a vessel. But she wasn't saddened by this, she knew that this power wasn't hers in the first place, only now she noticed that she prefers to increase her strength through her hard work, she doesn't want to borrow strength from someone. She was blinded by her previous goal that it was too late before she noticed this. Once the ruler was gone, Kane felt a huge mountain lifted off of her shoulders and directly hugged Kenji. Thank you. With the last mutter, Kane finally fell asleep. However, Kenji who heard the familiar words was shocked and a tear fell of his cheeks before smiling warmly. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. Please visit my Piatrian to read ten advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage. Six. CH 55. Sunlight passed through the gaps of the curtains, directly hitting the faces of Kenji and Kane, who were sleeping peacefully. Yesterday has been chaotic for Kenji. First, he just fought with two monarchs who came to kill him. Second, his furry friend Caesar turns out to be alive, or to say, reincarnated and became an untouchable existence. Then, he confronts a ruler and even forced him out of the mortal world. Kenji soon woke up and stretched his limbs and yawned deeply. So far, this has been the best sleep of his life. Just after a long battle then going to sleep while cuddling with his lover is probably the reason why it was the best. After yawning, he turned to his side and saw that Kane was still asleep, so he quietly and slowly floated out of the bed and went to the bathroom. While he was brushing his teeth, Kenji was thinking about the power of the absolute being that he just received. So far, he hasn't noticed anything new about him, his powers, or his mind. It's like the meeting with Caesar was just his dream, and it never happened. He doesn't know what kind of power does the absolute being has but since he was the said creator of everything then he should at least have the strength to back up his name. But thinking about the absolute being who was killed by his own creation, Kenji can't help but think that he is weak. Wait. Creator? When Kenji thought of this, he realized the power of the absolute being. 
since he was said to be a creator then he could probably create anything, right? And I have at least a portion of his power so I could possibly create something inorganic? At first, Kenji thought it was ridiculous, but the more he thought about the more he wanted to try it. So, after brushing his teeth, he went out of the bathroom and saw that Kane was still sleeping. Shaking his head, he thought, let's not do it here. After that, he went out of the house and flew away, looking for an abandoned warehouse somewhere. Although his house has a training room, he's not gonna risk his house to do something he doesn't know, so it's why he's searching for an abandoned warehouse that is derived from life. Soon, after looking for a minute, he finally found what he was looking for. When he entered, he saw that it was just a normal empty warehouse. This should be enough. Nodding his head, Kenji then proceeded to finally try the power he inherited from the Absolute Being. First, he would try his strength, speed, durability, and all his current abilities, to see if something changed to him. Since he can't just casually test his strength lest he wanted to destroy the whole of Tokyo. He then looked at his arm and got a good idea. Well, since I can't test my strength here, then why not just try it on my body? Not only will I test my strength, but I'll also be able to test my durability. Two birds with one stone. Kenji felt his idea was good enough, so he proceeded to try it. Using his left hand to pinch his other hand, Kenji could feel no pain, while at the same time, he could feel how tough his skin was. He doesn't know how tough he is, but he knows that he could withstand hundreds of nukes at the same time just from his body alone. Then, his strength must have increased since there's a red spot on his arm, where he pinched himself. I guess my strength also improved. I'll try my speed too. Having said that, everything around Kenji seems to come to a halt. Kenji could even see a bunch of flies on the corner of the warehouse. Kenji felt like he stopped the time because the flies weren't moving. He then proceeded to try his speed by going outside the warehouse. When he came into the road, everything was not moving, like the cars, people, and Kenji could even see a girl who was about to fall to the ground with her drink in her hand. Deciding to help her, he walked toward the girl and grabbed her drink and carried the girl until she was standing on her own. But before he gave her drink back, he took a sip first. This is pretty cool. Kenji mutters while looking around him with fascination in his eyes. Kenji couldn't help but feel like he was a god watching over his creations. A slash N metro man everyone? Let's stop here. He went back to the warehouse and everything resumed to its current speed. After having a taste of his speed, it was finally time for the last pie. Which is the new power he inherited. Now, Kenji doesn't know how to control it, but he'll just use his imagination. He closed his eyes and tried to imagine a pen appearing in his hand. At first, nothing seems to happen, however, a few seconds later, Kenji felt his stamina decreasing for a bit before it stops. Now, Kenji could feel a weight on his hand. So, he opened his eyes and saw a normal-looking pen resting in his hand. This? Kenji was shocked when he saw what was in his hand. It turns out, he was right. His new power now is creation. He could now create anything he imagines. However, the only limit is his imagination. Kenji played with his new power for an hour before he stopped. Now, Kenji noted everything about his new power inside his mind. First of all, he can't create something that has life. Second, he needed to focus to create something. Lastly, he could even create all the elements. Fire, earth, wind, water, and their variants, like lightning and ice. There don't seem to be any problems regarding his new power. Now, there's still one remaining test that will decide his future fights. And that is his resistance against magic. Caesar said that he'll receive some kind of resistance, or immunity against it once he acquired the absolute being's power. 
So, he left the warehouse and flew back to his home. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. Please visit my P at Trian to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 4. CH 56. Once he was back, he sensed someone inside the training room. Although Kenji didn't know how he could sense someone, but he brushed it aside and focused on who it was. Soon, Kenji discovered that it was actually Kane who was training with her katana. When he went to the training room, Kenji could see that Kane was too focused on her training that she didn't notice Kenji entered. As for Kenji, he knew that the reason for this was because of her loss of power yesterday, so she'll probably try to bring it back up through her efforts. So, Kenji sneaked up behind her and hugged her from behind. Kia. Because of the sudden hug, Kane didn't react in time and yelled in shock. When he turns around and saw Kenji, she pouted and glared at him. Why did you do that? You were too focused on your training, so I thought I should make you stop. Kenji replied to her while picking on his nose. Not being disgusted by it, Kane pouted again and said, Why? Kenji sighed at her question and then pointed at her body, which was already full of sweat. But that's not what Kenji meant. He meant about the twitching muscles of Kane indicating that she's currently surpassing the limits of her body. Of course, Kane knew this, it is her body after all. But she just ignored the pain in her body and continued training. You should rest for now. Taking away her katanas, he placed them back into the weapon rack and dragged Kane towards the bathroom. Take a bath. I'll just test a few things in the training room. After Kenji left her, Kane just stared at her calloused hands and felt very sad. She's not used to her current strength now. After all, she's got a taste of higher power. But now that she lost it, she's trying to grasp it again but this time, through her sheer efforts. She doesn't have the mindset of catching up to Kenji since she knew that it was nothing but an unattainable goal. If there is one thing that Kane wanted now, is to stay beside Kenji forever without separating from him. Although she can't catch up, she could at least give him something that no one could give him. Her love for him. And she's gonna make sure that their future will be bright, and they will have their child and live a happy life together, watching their kids grow up and become what they wanted to be. So, instead of getting stronger to stay by his side. She's now getting stronger to make sure that the future that she wanted will come true. When Kenji was back in the training room, he proceeded to grab some magical weapons and pointed them at his arm. Welp here goes nothing. Kenji shrugged his shoulders and stabbed the sword in his arm. Ting. For a few seconds, Kenji doesn't feel any pain, so when he looked at his arm, instead of a bleeding arm that he was expecting, Nothing happened on his arm and Kenji could see that the sword was bent on the side. With a wide grin on his face, Kenji grabbed another magical weapon and kept stabbing his arm continuously. If someone in his back were to see him, they'd think that he was a serial killer, killing his victims, except that there was no blood and there is a bunch of broken swords, spears, daggers, and weapons on the floor. Kenji can't help but laugh loudly and felt very happy. Now that his only weakness is gone, he's practically invincible now, and nothing could threaten him. Meanwhile, Kane, who just finished her bath, heard Kenji's loud laugh and shook her head and sighed. Ding dong. However, she heard the doorbell ring on the front door, so she proceeded to walk there and peek through the small hole on the door, and saw a familiar old man at the front of the door. She opened the door slightly and asks, How may I help you? Oh, hi, Mr. Wada. I'm actually here to talk to you about something. 
Is Kenji-san inside? With a smile on his face, Gunhi started a conversation. Nodding her head, she said, Yes, Han is here. Please come in. I'll call him in a minute. She then opens the door and lets the old man in before walking to the training room. When she went inside, she saw that Kenji was also about to go outside, so they both bumped into each other. At least, that's what Kane expected to happen. Instead, Kenji casually catched her when she was about to fall backward. Just how tough is his body? Kane felt like screaming when she bumped into Kenji. She felt like she just bumped an unmovable mountain. Rubbing her nose slightly, she heard Kenji speak. Sorry, are you hurt, babe? Looking at her worriedly, Kenji asks. Shaking her head from her thoughts, she remembered that there was actually another person in the house. I am fine, anyways, the chairman of the Korean hunters is here, and he is waiting for us outside in the living room. Gunhee? At first, Kenji was confused, but suddenly realized his purpose of coming here. Oh right, I almost forgot that he is here to make amends with his daughter. Kenji felt like slapping himself mentally, for forgetting such an important thing. Well, let's not make him wait. Let's go outside. Helping her stand on her own, they both left the training room and walked towards the living room and saw Gun He obediently sitting on one of the sofas while fiddling with his finger, which is so unlike him. So, what are you doing here? Kane was the first one to speak when we reached the living room. I want to tell you something, Kane-san. Weirded out by what's happening, Kane frowned and turned to look at Kenji. Meanwhile, seeing Kane look at him, Kenji just shrugged his shoulders. What do you mean? Kane was having a bad feeling about this, but she still asks. Gunhi paused for a few seconds, as if he was contemplating about something. I. I'm your father. Luke Skywalker, an OO. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my P at Trian to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel 5. CH57 Like a bomb exploding on her head, Kane froze on the spot, not moving even an inch. At first, she wanted to refute the old man's words but seeing that Kenji was calm and looking at her seriously. She knew that Kenji must have known this and was preparing to tell her. She doesn't know what to say. She wanted to be happy since she finally reunited with her father, but at the same time, she wanted to punch the hell out of him. So, she bowed her head, and tears slowly dropped to the floor. Meanwhile, Gunhee cannot bear the sight of his daughter crying, so he tried to comfort her. Kane chan I'm very so of. Gunhee didn't even finish his sentence when his abdomen was thwacked by a heavy and sharp fist. It turns out to be Kane, who decided to punch the hell out of him instead of being happy at their reunion. Gunhee's eyes twitched at this while enduring the pain in his stomach. At least he knew that he deserved this after what he has done. Meanwhile, Kane just glared at him and said, After leaving me and my mom for 18 years, just to buy a fucking milk, even if mom forgives you, I won't. Soon after she said that she stood up and walked away from the living room, leaving Kenji and Gunhi, who were squirming in pain. I forgot to tell you about her temper. Kenji shrugs and told him, while Gunhi felt a tick appear on his head. Why yeah, I think she inherited it from her mom. Gunhi, despite the pain, still managed to joke and chuckle. I think I'll be going now. Can you please help me arrange a meeting with Shina-san tomorrow? Gunhee stood from his seat and asked Kenji. Kenji put his hand on his chin and seems to fall into deep thinking. All right, fine. 
but this'll be the last time. Whether they forgive you or not, you'll be on your own. Gunhee nodded in understanding. If Sheena didn't forgive him, then no matter how many years it take, he'll keep asking for forgiveness. Even if they ask him to take his own life, then he'll do it. After that, Gunhee left with Kenji escorting him out. Once he was gone, Kenji went back to the house and walked slowly to their bedroom. When he opened the door, he saw Kane sitting on the bed while hugging her knees, while tears were visible on her cheeks. So he marched towards her and hugged her, putting her head on his chest. For a few minutes, they just stayed in that position, either of them moving a bit. Finally, it was Kane who broke the silence. Do you think what I did was right? When Kane said this, Kenji was just silent for a few seconds before giving her a reply. Do you think what you did is right? Cause if you think it is, then what you did is right. Always remember that I'll always be by your side even if the whole world is against you. Kane felt touched by what he said, so she asks next. Then, even if your parents are against me? However, his next reply made her laugh. Sorry, babe, but my parents are my first priority. The second is you. Ha! I understand. I'm also the same, you know, but only my mom is my first priority. Kenji also chuckled at her words, and soon, silence once again permeated on the room. Hey, Han, if you were in my position, would you do the same? It was Kane once again who broke the silence permeating the room. When Kenji heard what she said, he then remembers his past life parents and how his father was in the army when his mother died. To be honest, he's not mad at him for that. He knew that the reason he was in the army was that he needed money to support him and his mom. As the man of the family, they are always expected to provide for their wife and children. If there is one thing that Kenji hates about the law, and that is that the rights between women and men aren't equal. Enji. Kenji. Because he was too lost in his thoughts, he didn't notice that Kane was calling for him. As sorry, what was that? Sigh, never mind. Kane sighed and shook her head before standing up. Well, I think I got my energy back. How about a spar? She cast a challenging look toward Kenji. Of course, Kenji accepted her challenge. So for the whole day, they just sparred with each other. And obviously, Kenji always won, even when he gave her an advantage like he'll use only one hand or he'll never dodge her attacks. And because Kenji was already immune to magic, even the magical weapons that Kane used, Kenji just shrugged them off. When the night reached, it was only then that Kenji noticed so many missed calls on his phone. Most of them are from his parents, his personal assistant, and some friends. Though there is one chat that stands above all of them. And that is Thomas's and the U.S. president's message to him. Thomas's message was just a casual greeting while inviting him to a club that he found during his stay in Japan. At first, Kenji thought of accepting, but when he read the message of the president, he scratched the invitation of Thomas, since according to the president's message, he's needed in a meeting of top leaders tomorrow because they wanted to decide on whether to create another higher rank or not. After all, Kenji once again performed a miracle and defeated two monsters that are as strong if not stronger than Kamish. It turns out that before the monarchs came to him, they caused chaos in the U.S. for killing Christopher Reed in his mansion. A monster that could even kill a national hunter, so fast that before the public or the hunter's association could react, he was already dead. And just the feat of him defeating two of these monsters made the top leaders contemplate on whether they should promote him on a higher rank. Once Kenji was done reading the message, he can't help but think on what will the name of the next rank would be. Is it gonna be world rank? International rank? Or universal rank? 
dash underscore 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 you can visit my patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 6. CH 58. In the morning, when Kenji woke up, he saw that Kane wasn't by his side. So, guessing that she's awake by now and probably training in the training room. After brushing his teeth and such, Kenji, with a proper suit, walked downstairs. But what he didn't expect was Kane who was walking towards the dining table while holding two plates. He also saw some dishes on the table, which is still smoking hot. H.M., you're awake! When Kane noticed Kenji walking downstairs, she brightened up and placed the plates down on the table before tiptoeing toward Kenji and pecking his lips. Good morning, Han! She greeted him before dragging him to the table. I've cooked some of your favorites. Let's eat. Kenji just let himself be dragged by her, before sitting on the chair. Kane also sat opposite to him. Once she sat down, both of them clapped their hands and said, Itadikimasu. Nam. Nam. Once they're done eating, Kenji can't help but ask her, What's gotten into you today? You seems cheerful. Kane stopped what she was doing and turned to face Kenji. When she turned, Kenji could see her smiling face and heard her. Nothing! Before she resumed on what she was doing. Kenji sighed and didn't force her anymore. As long as she's happy then everything's fine. He also needed to train his new powers and try to find its limits. Who knows, maybe he could create some items that came out of the DC world like the kryptonite, or something. However, when Kenji mentioned kryptonite in his mind, he paused and realized something. If this works then I could make Kane a kryptonian like Superman. Kenji mused to himself, excitedly. So, after kissing her on her cheeks, he went to the training room since he now knew that his new powers would not cause any accidental destructions. Once he was down in the training room, the first thing he did was to try to remember everything about kryptonite. There are many types of kryptonites. The first one is the green kryptonite, which is Superman's most known weakness. The red kryptonite has unexpected consequences and what happens varies from exposure to exposure, turning into a dragon excessive hair growth, gaining telepathy, etc. While the gold kryptonite can make Superman and any other kryptonians lose their ability to process the yellow sun's heat energy, thus permanently removing their powers. As for the blue kryptonite, he doesn't remember much about it except that it is said to be a cure to the effects of the red kryptonite. While the white kryptonite kills all plant life, regardless of origin, then, the black kryptonite, which gives someone a split personality, both good and evil side. Pink kryptonite, which can make someone gay. And finally, the platinum kryptonite, that gives humans the power of a kryptonian permanently. This is actually the kryptonite that he's aiming to create. If this works then he could give Kane the powers of a kryptonian. If he is successful, then Kane won't have to resort to other things to get stronger. There are many other kryptonites, but he forgot most of them, so this so the only kryptonites that he could remember. Now that I noticed it, I'm slowly losing my past life memories, except for the fact that I'm reincarnated. Massaging his head, Kenji tried to remember anything about his past life. All he could remember now was his family and most of his time in the war. He could also remember vague images of Caesar and Ellie, along with Elijah. Since he doesn't want to forget about this, Kenji proceeded to create a notebook and a pen to write off all he can remember. But he doesn't want this to be discovered. After all, he's gonna bring this reincarnation thing 
up into his grave. Instead of writing it as his diary, he decided to disguise it as a novel. So if ever someone discover this, they'll just going to assume that this is just a novel that he writes to pass time. For a whole five minutes of non-stop writing, thanks to his Superman-like physique. Wah! Stretching out his fingers, he used his hand to crack his neck side to side. It's finally done! Wiping off his non-existent sweat, Kenji held the notebook in front of him. He added some unnecessary parts into it, but he could still determine that this is his past life. Now that this is done, it's time for me to test whether I could replicate kryptonites or not. But before that, he decided to practice a bit more, as a warm-up. With his hand forward, Kenji knew it was time to create the platinum kryptonite. At first tries, he failed and failed and failed. Although what he created all looked exactly like the platinum kryptonite, it doesn't have the same effects as the real platinum kryptonite. There's gotta be something that could make it work. Biting off his nail, as his old habit. Kenji was thinking of a few reasons on why it won't work. First of all, either he just lacks imagination, which doubts he is, or his powers just cannot replicate something that is out of this world. Lastly, he was starting too fast. It was as if he, a newbie, was playing a game in a hard difficulty, without knowing about the basics first. Though Kenji is more inclined towards the latter one, since he knew it has the highest possibility. Since he needed to start with the basic, he starts off with minerals like copper, gold, and such. But before all that, he went to the library and grabbed a book, which is titled as All About Matters. He also grabbed a few science books, ranging from high school to college. Since he's gonna create, then he'd need to have a full understanding about matter and how everything was created with matter, and before he forgot, he also grabbed some books about mana and magic, since it might be helpful. Although he doesn't know if it helps, but it doesn't hurt to try, right? Once to grab the books, he went back to the training room and proceeded to read the books. Though reading it is an understatement because he was just skimming through every book thanks to his super memory. Once he was done, which only took for a whole minute, Kenji finally closed the book and prepared to create the basics. Yash, let's do this. Setting the books aside, Kenji put his hand forward with his palm facing the ceiling. He then closed his eyes and focused. All right then, let's go. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel 6. CH59 The first thing Kenji did was to expand his mind and release the creative part of his mind. He needed to focus every carefully to not make any mistakes. First thing that Kenji did was to recall everything about the said kryptonite. First of all, it can give a human, Kryptonian's power, permanently, which is the real reason why he was adamant on creating this thing. To be honest, there wasn't much information about it except for that it can grant Kryptonian powers to those who have touched it. First, he created the base of it inside his mind. It looks completely like a normal platinum, if it wasn't for the fact that it was glowing slightly. Then, he tried to give it the function it's supposed to have which is to grant Kryptonian powers. Kenji didn't know what happened, but he could see that something changed in the Kryptonite, and he's about to find out, now. So, after creating its image, it was finally time to bring out the pie. With his hand still forward, everything around his palm slowly morphs into something unexplainable. Not only that, he could even feel the sunlight energy inside his body transferring towards the morphed place. 
Kenji wasn't the only one who could sense this. In fact, even Kenny, who was busy cooking in the kitchen, felt the mana around her decreasing, as if something or someone is sucking them out. So, she stopped her cooking and followed on where the mana was gathering at. When she saw that it was towards the training room, where she sensed Kenji was. What's going on? Kane can't help but be curious, and entered the training room. As she entered the training room, the more she felt the mana being sucked away like a vacuum. Not only that, she even felt her own mana, being sucked away, albeit a bit slow, but it still bothered her. Once she fully entered the room, she saw her boyfriend, sitting on the floor, cross-legged, while his hand is stretched out. But that is not what caught her attention. What caught her attention was the swirling thing on the palm of his hand. It was as if he was creating a black hole, especially since she felt that it was the thing that was sucking the mana around them. Han? Kane tried to call out to him, but he didn't respond. When she was about to touch him, something happened on the palm of Kenji's hand that made her stop what she was doing. Currently, she was closing her eyes because a blinding light flashed on Kenji's palm earlier, exactly where the swirling thing was. When the flash subsided, and so is her blindness. So when she opened her eyes, the first thing she did was to look at where the flash flashed. Instead of the swirling thing earlier, what replaced was a platinum rock. It looks like as if it was just mined a few seconds ago. But the noticing thing about the platinum rock was that it was glowing in silver. Kane was very tempted to touch the rock, however, a voice distracts her. Kane? What are you doing here? When Kenji opened his eyes, the first thing he saw was Kane whose eyes were glued on the platinum kryptonite on his palm. What, Ash? Oh, nothing. I was just curious earlier since I felt something sucking the mana in the air, so I can't help but trace on where it's being sucked from, and it led me here. By the way, what's with the rock? Kane immediately explained herself before trying to change the topic by asking about the rock. Oh this? I created it just now. Shrugging his shoulders, Kenji told her. You created this? I mean, how? A little bit confused, Kane asks him. It's a long story. I managed to awaken by monarch powers and it gave me this ability. Kenji said half truth and half lie. After all, with how complicated the absolute being, monarchs, and rulers are, he feel like not wanting to involve Kane in it. I see. Muttering while nodding her head, Kane can't help but marvel at the thought of being able to create things. After all, it is everyone's dreams after all. Not only can you create golds and such, but you would also feel like a god. Not to mention, most humans, if given the power of creation, would most likely develop a god complex. Then what is this shiny rock? Why is it glowing? Kenne pointed at the platinum kryptonite and asked. This? Raising his hand, he showed her the platinum kryptonite. Kenji smirked and said, This. This shiny rock will completely change your life. Frowning, Kane held Kenji's forehead and said, Weird, you don't seem to be sick. Is it perhaps the dish that I cooked yesterday? Slapping her hand away slightly, Kenji chuckled at Kane. No, I'm not sick. After you touch this, then you'll surely believe me after. After saying that, he put his hand forward and presented the said rock to Kane who was hesitating on touching the rock. It's not like she didn't trust Kenji. In fact, even if he told her to jump on a volcano, she'll gladly do so. But this time is a bit different. Her instincts were ramping all around her body, as if it was excited and kept telling her to touch it. Deciding to trust Kenji and her instincts, she slowly stretched her hand until it's close to the rock. Without hesitating anymore, she pushed her hand forward and it came in contact with the shiny rock. Suddenly, strings made out of silver color spreads out and kept revolving around her. Not only that, Kenji could see that most of these strings were entering her eyes, mouth, 
and nose. As it entered her body, lightning made of platinum were flickering around her. Her eyes, which was normal earlier, was now glowing white, and Kenji could see that her body was slowly enlarging a bit before compressing back. Although it looked like nothing happened, Kenji could see that her muscles now packed of impressive power. Meanwhile, Kane, who was submerged by this, could also feel the strength filling her body. Not gonna lie, I kinda like this feeling. Even when she accepted the ruler's power, she didn't feel this kind of strength. Soon, the silver streaks faded out of existence, leaving Kane, who was unscratched all along, and nothing seems to happen in her body. But unknown to all, what changed her was something inside her, and that is her blood and her newly found strength. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 6. CH60 The moment Kane opened her eyes, her pupils shrank. The reason for it was because she could see what is beyond the walls. Not only that, she could also see every dust or fly around them in a slow motion. She could even see the fly flap its wings. T, this is amazing. Kane can't help but mutter to herself. She didn't expect such a normal looking stone to have such powers to grant those how touched it powers. She turned her head toward Kenji, who was looking at her in worry. Kane, are you okay? Do you feel uncomfortable somewhere? Hearing his worried voice, Kane smirked and rushed towards him before snatching his lips with hers. HMMPHH, Kenji's eyes widened at first, but slowly sinked in the pleasure of her lips. Kane tried to penetrate his mouth with her tongue, however, Kenji didn't like being dominated, so he used his own tongue to penetrate Kane's mouth. Humph! This time, it was Kane's time to widen her eyes. She tried to fight his tongue back, but unfortunately, Kenji's strength is stronger than hers, so she could only grovel and let Kenji do whatever he wanted in her mouth. So, for the next five minutes of only kissing, Kenji's dropple was all over their faces. This is the first time she kissed Kenji, longer than a minute. So, she is bound to drool in delight. Fiwa. Finally, Kenji let go of her already swollen lips and cupped her face. Your lips are delicious, Kenji told her. Kane just nodded her head in haze. She didn't expect that her attack would backfire to her. She just wanted to give Kenji a surprise kiss, but what she got was a kiss orgasm. Yes, during those five minutes, she unknowingly wetted herself, hence why there is a small puddle beneath them. Kenji can't help but chuckle when he saw the puddle that has formed under Kane and him. He leaned his face closer to her ears before whispering to her. Naughty girl. He then blew on her ear. Foo. Kane quivered in relish, while her panties, which was already soaking wet, trembled again. Seeing this, Kenji can't help but think to himself. Am I really that good at pleasuring her? Unknown to him, Kane was just temporarily more sensitive to touch because of she just became a Kryptonian. Seeing that Kane was a bit in a dazed and probably won't respond for a few minutes, Kenji Princess carried her and walked to their room. After dropping Kane on the bed, he went back to the training room to test his powers more. Since he could create platinum kryptonite, then he could probably create something more powerful like the mother box. But he's not gonna risk it, since just the platinum kryptonite could already suck at least one-eighth of his sunlight energy, along with the mana around him, then the creation of Mother Box might consume more. Maybe he would practice a bit more, and if possible, try to reduce the consumption when creating. 
So, for the next few hours of practicing his creation powers, he discovered three new things. First, when he's creating normal items like rocks, chair, table and such, it doesn't consume any sunlight energy, or maybe it consumes but it is so little that Kenji doesn't notice. Secondly, like his previous statement, creating items that has functions, like kryptonites, mana core, magical items like sword, and such things. Meanwhile, Kene has been awake a few hours ago, and now she's sitting on the bed, while thinking about what happened earlier. It looks like her sensitivity has gone back to normal, though she would like to experience it again. After all, it has its perks. It was then that she remembered what she saw that time. Everything was in slow motion, and she could even perceive even the smallest details. Not only that, ever since she touched that rock, there has been a change in her body, like it was looking for something, or it was hungry. Not knowing what to do, she decided to ask Kenji about it, while at the same time ask him about the rock earlier. She got out of bed and went back to the training room, just in time to bump into him who was about to go out of the training room. Ah, uh, babe, you're awake. Kenji was surprised but still gave her a kiss on the cheek. Han, can I ask you about something? Kane said. Raising his eyebrow, Kenji replied to her. What is it, babe? Can I ask you about that rock? And ever since earlier, there has been something inside me that is making me weak. It's like it wants to eat something. Do you know what it is? Realizing the meaning of what she said, Kenji immediately brought her outside, exactly where the sunlight goes down. At first, Kane was confused on why she was being brought outside, however her question were immediately answered when the moment they're outside and was bathed in the sunlight, the hungry thing that is inside her, was quickly quenched, and not only that, she felt her strength growing tremendously. Seeing that Kane was too occupied in feeling her growing strength, Kenji smiled and it was time to tell her about the Platinum Kryptonite. Babe, that rock earlier is called Platinum Kryptonite, and it gives someone powers that is similar to mine. When Kane heard him, even if she is occupied of feeling when growing strength, thanks to her now enhanced brain and super hearing, she clearly heard what he said, and it is now wrong that she is very shocked by now. So, she snapped her head to him and excitedly asks him. Does that mean I can now fly? Yup. Can I shoot lasers with my eyes? Of course. Does that mean I'm as strong as you now? I don't know about that. After all, we both get our strength in the sun or any stars, and I'm ahead of you in terms of bathing in the sun, so being as strong as me is pretty much impossible. Kane wasn't saddened by his words, in fact being second only to his strength so enough for her. Thinking about the strength that she'll reach in the future, she can't help but attack Kenji once more. Unfortunately, she once again lost but thankfully this time, she didn't wet herself. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 6. CH61 While Kenji and Kane were living their life after the chaos that the three monarchs ensued, inside a throne room, a red-haired man was sitting on the throne while a man was in front of him, kneeling respectfully. And Teri-sama, those idiots had get themselves killed. What's our next move? Meanwhile, Antares, the man sitting on the throne while his fist was on the left side of his chin, while the elbow was leaning on the armrest, just yawned and said, Don't worry, the shadow monarch hasn't appeared yet. Once he appeared, gather everyone including all the other monarchs. We'll finish the both of them in one swift, before the rulers could react. After saying this, Antares's eyes glowed in red, while also revealing five dragon heads behind his throne. 
while the kneeling man gulped his saliva in fear and nodded. I understand, my lord, I'll inform the other monarchs about this. The kneeling man stood up and bowed once more before leaving the throne room in a flash, leaving Antares, who was grinning in excitement and delight. You never failed to amuse me, star monarch. While Antares was plotting something in the future, Kenji and Kane tested her new powers in the training room. They first sparred with each other, and Kenji can't help but feel the difference of the past Kane who hasn't been infested with the radiation of the platinum kryptonite, to Kane who has been infested with the radiation. If the before Kane could hardly touch him, now Kane could even punch him now, although it doesn't hurt even one bit. After all, she hasn't been exposed to the sun for her whole life like Kenji. Aside from that, Kane could still use her mana, which in turn gave her a resistance to magics, which made Kenji jealous a bit, as he has to rely to his suit at first, though it's different now, since he awakened the absolute being's power. Not only that, but Kane also managed to get hop of her flight ability. She said that the moment she was exposed to the sun, she already knew that she can fly, as she always wanted to fly like a bird. After sparring and learning more about her powers, it was then revealed that the only weakness she had is the red sun and the kryptonite. As for why he knew, well, he created green kryptonite, and voila, he doesn't have a weakness to it, but Kane has. Though Kane wasn't saddened by this, as Kenji told her that kryptonite doesn't exist in this world. Once they're done, Kenji was called by his father about his promotion. Since a few S rank hunters and Thomas Andre, testified that the enemies that time was probably much more stronger than Kamish, at the fact that they killed Christopher Reed, the World Council decided to create another new rank just for Kenji. World Rank Kenji was the only hunter who has a rank for this, as in order to reach this rank was to get a recognition from a national hunter, and you must defeat at least one beyond S rank monsters. That's right. The world decided to categorize the monarchs as beyond S rank monsters, as not only they look like a human being, but the main reason was their destructive strengths that almost wiped out the entirety of Tokyo, and also for their massacre of Christopher Reed and countless S ranks. Meanwhile, Kenji, who heard his father about this, wasn't excited at all. After all, he knew that this rank presents nothing but a huge target on his back. And besides, Monarchs exists, so the title is pretty much useless if the world is destroyed. It was decided that the promoting ceremony would be scheduled till next week, so Kenji would he on vacation in a week. Kenji decided to use this week to practice his powers, although at first he thought of having a date with Kane, but decided to date again once the Monarchs and rulers are solved. Now that I remember, I have a guild, right? While walking out of the training room and towards the bathroom, Kenji remembered his guild that he created, that only he and Kane are the members. He hasn't seen anyone with potential to his guild, hence why it was empty. Though he would like to invite his parents, but they're already retired, and it's time for them to rest. Maybe I can recruit hunters from other countries. While thinking of this, Kenji finally arrived at the bathroom. Before going in here, he grabbed his phone since he needed to make a call. Pressing a few numbers, the phone rang, and was immediately answered by a familiar voice. Hey Kenji, how are you doing? Is Kane fine? I heard about what happened, I hope you're okay. Hi Shinasan, Kane's fine, and I'm also the same. I just called you since I needed to break something to you. What is it? Is it something bad? Well, I don't know how to say this to you. But someone wanted to meet you, and he's someone you know. Kenji said. As someone I know? Kenji, who is it? This time, there was nervousness in Sheena's voice. Don't worry, nothing will happen to you. Just trust me on this one, okay? And besides, Kenne has already met him. Really? But why didn't Kane tell me? And by the way, him? 
As in a guy? Yeah. I don't know about Kenny, but yes, it is a guy. So, are you gonna meet him? Okay then, when will it be? Tomorrow, and I'll send you the place where you'll meet. Anyway, that's all, take care, Sheena-san, I'm hanging up. Okay. Hitting the decline button, Kenji then tapped a few more numbers before it rang again. Gunhee speaking. Gunhee, who was on the other side of the phone, answered. This is Kenji, she agreed on meeting you, but it'll be on tomorrow, I'll send you where you guys will meet. As she agreed? Really? Thank you very much, Kenji Dano. Excitement filled Gunhee's voice, as he kept thanking Kenji. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyway, I'll hang up now. I'll send you the place later. Once he hang up, he lean on the bathtub, and silently think about the things he have done since coming here. All the fights, drama, and some shits. Kenji felt like he needed a drink. Asterisk, sigh, asterisk, how can life be so cruel? Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. And there goes the first volume. This will be the last chapter of volume one. After this will be volume two. And in this volume two, I'll try to write Kenji, enjoying his life, while also fighting in the dungeon. And in here, he might also find some potential guild members, though be warned, some of them might be familiar to you, like Goku or something. But that's just an example since I'll be adding some more other worlds in the solo leveling universe, to spice things up. So yeah, if you want you can recommend some guild members. Please visit my P at tree and to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www patreon.com slash slimesage extra chapter every 200 stones 4 ch62 hey guys here's the volume 2 so in this chapter there will be a some time skips until we arrived in the canon Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. For the next few months, Kenji's life has been a bit dull, waking up in the morning, cuddling with his girlfriend, clearing out some S rank dungeons that has been frequently appearing around the world. Not only that, Kenji was now promoted to world rank hunter, and so far, he's the only hunter with that kind of rank. There are so many benefits that he could get, that Kenji even felt like a president. Yes, his position is now equivalent to the president, since he's basically now the guardian of the whole world, not just Japan. Then, he could also now fly around the world without getting permission from someone, or being sued for trespassing which is what Kenji liked, since he always wanted to circle the world, and see how fast he is. Will he be as fast as the normal Superman? Or will he surpass him and go beyond Ultra? And that is what he did during his free time, and during that time, he asked for someone to create a magical speed measuring instrument that could resist light speeds. That day, he discovered that his speed was faster than light. While Superman could go 186,000 miles per second, then he could go 300,000 miles per second. Unfortunately, before he could go much faster than that, the measuring device was destroyed under the pressure of light speed. Maybe I should keep it glued to my body? After all, the measuring device was a device that he has to hold. I should have definitely asked for that. Kenji scratched his head and muttered. After the measure of speed, Kenji asked for another one, but instead, it is glued to his body, and can withstand a speed that surpasses 300,000 miles per second. Now you must be wondering, why didn't he just create it using his creation powers? You see, Kenji wanted to use this as his trump card or some sort, he didn't want some monarch's vessels, or ruler's vessel, 
to know about it, right? Who knew how will they react when they knew that I had this power? Perhaps the war that would raise upon earth will come much sooner than it is supposed to be. And Kenji wasn't ready for that. Not because he's weak or something, but because he wanted to make sure that Kane is strong enough for it. Maybe when she's as strong as the Superman, but definitely not now, when she just acquired her powers. Also, during this passing months, Kenji finally decided to bring some movies here, and as expected, they became as famous as they were supposed to be. One of the movies that he brought was the DC movies, and he starred there as literally Superman. With his powers and the supernatural in this world, there's no need for CGI's or edits, since magic could solve that. So, his movies were more realistic and more beautiful than the original. Thanks to that, the Akano family rised up in the ranks, as one of the richest family in the world. That is not the only thing that happened Kane's father, Gogun he retired from his position and decided to go back to his family. Sinshina forgave him, but with the rule that Gun he will have to start over her again, meaning he has to court her again, and get his blessing from Sheena's parents. Getting the blessing was the hardest to him because Sheena's parents are so old that they don't remember him anymore. So far, Sheena haven't forgave him yet, but he could now go on dates with her again. As for Kane, although she was a bit mad at her mother for forgiving him, but with Kenji by her side, she calmed down and also decided to give him a chance. But she placed the condition that gun he would never buy milks. Funnily enough, Kane also placed this condition to Kenji, who just shrugged it off and agreed. It's not like he needed to buy some milk. After all, he could create the milk. Anyway, after that, Iroh's son, Lu Ten, finally joined Asaho Guild as a D-rank fire magic user. With him, joining Kenji during his A-rank raids, Lu Ten quickly got stronger fast and was also promoted to B-rank by the end of three months since joining. Meanwhile, Kenji was also being invited around the world to clear out some dungeon breaks, since most countries doesn't have the luxury of S-ranks. Though there are some countries who have an S-rank hunters, like the guy in the Philippines, a famous S-rank boxer, Manny Pacquiao, who uses his fist to defeat monsters. There is also one in Thailand, Tachikorn Yiram, better known internationally as Tony Jiao. A famous celebrity, Muay Thai fighter, and an S-rank hunter. There are also many more. So far, Kenji has cleared out 13 dungeon breaks outside Japan. Even though he was given the benefit to trespass any countries using his flying ability, there are still some countries that doesn't like it, for example, North Korea and Russia. North Korea is obvious, since they don't want someone like Kenji meddling in their country. Kenji understand that, but even though they didn't allow him to trespass, Kenji still did it sometimes, just to annoy them. After all, even if he trespass, what can they do to him? Unless they would like to have a war with both America and China, since Kenji is friends with Thomas Andre and Lu Jigang, as both of them are the national hunters of their country, not to mention he himself. So, the only thing North Korea could do was to give him warnings, but they didn't make a move. They're smart enough to know the consequences after all. Damn, my status is really great. Not even a country could offend me. Is this what the prince and princesses felt during medieval era? Kenji who was out of space, and was bathing in the sun, muttered to himself. To be honest, even though the monarchs and rulers haven't made their move yet, that doesn't mean Kenji will slack off. So during his free time, he baths in the sun along with Kane, while also training his creation powers. So far, he could also create or produce elements, like fire, water, rock, and air. Not only is he Superman, but he also became the Avatar. Thinking of this, Kenji chuckled to himself, before squinting his eyes just to see Kane flying around circling the sun. His progress with Kane can be both good and bad. Good, because they sleep in the bed naked, 
while doing some oral sex before sleep. So far, they haven't sex yet since Kenne wanted to do it after their marriage, and Kenji isn't some horny guy who is greedy for sex, so he agreed with her. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 3. CH 63. Two years has passed since Kenji and Kane finally decided to marry. Kenji is 26 years old today while Kane is 25. On top of the tallest building in the world, which is actually owned by Kenji. Kenji was kneeling on the ground in front of Kane while on his hand is a diamond ring inside a soft and small box. Meanwhile, Kane put her hands on her mouth while her eyes were tearing up. She didn't expect that Kenji would finally propose to her. During these months, Kane has been showing hints to Kenji about marriage and such. And now, her hints turns out to be fruitful and Kenji is proposing to her in front of her. Will you, Tawada Kane, marry me? Such a simple words, but they carry a heavy love inside. Kane didn't even hesitate and said yes to him, before hugging him tightly and kissing him on his lips. Kenji reciprocated and kissed her back, while also inserting his tongue inside hers. HMMPHH Kane's eyes widened and slowly closed due to pleasure. During these two years, Kenji has gone so strong that he could already create fire that could drown a whole city if he ever wants. It looks like he underestimated the absolute being's power. It is much more powerful, even if it is just a portion of his power. Sometimes, Kenji thinks to himself on why would the absolute being let himself be killed by rulers when he's obviously much stronger than them. Was it perhaps because he doesn't know his powers very well? Or maybe he lacks imagination. Only he can tell this questions of his. Too bad he's dead now. And also, there has been an increase in gates breaks that forced the S ranks to, to be busy throughout the year. It has been calculated that every five months, there will be an increase in gate outbreak by one point. If this continues then he's afraid that humans won't be able to handle it, so he decided to create his own army. How? Well, with his power of creation, he created a bunch of diluted platinum kryptonite. As for why it is called diluted, is because it only gives strength and durability, but they can't use laser vision, or freeze breath or something like that. Though the strength and durability is already fine, since it is the same strength and durability as a normal Superman. So far, he managed to recruit at least 50 of them and he let them join his guild. Of course, he's not an idiot that will casually increase someone's power without caring about the repercussions. So he also created a mind-control device that could rewrite someone's memories and personality. Of course he isn't a bad guy, so he only inserted to their memories that he is their benefactor and will be loyal to him and his loved ones forever. He doesn't need to worry about their families since he mostly recruits beggars, or E-rank hunters that were mocked and despised around the world, and some of them even lost their loved one because of the monsters. Because of this, his guild became the number one in Asia because of their efficiency in clearing out gates. Especially with Kenji being their leader, his guild was immediately recognized by the top powers. Right now, those members were clearing gates that appeared all over Japan. While Lu Ten was assigned as the one in charge of them, and yes, Kenji also exposed him to the diluted platinum kryptonite. So right now, in just two years, Lu Ten became an S-rank hunter, not only that, but also the youngest S-rank hunter, after all, he's only 20 years old when he was promoted to S-rank. Iroh was very proud of him that day. 
After the proposal to Kane, both Kenji and Kane kept kissing each other while both of their bodies were sticking to each other. Soon, they both separated, all forming a saliva bridge as they separate. Kane was breathing heavily due to pleasure but soon recovered and said, I want to tell our parents. Can we? Kenji smilingly said, Sure, babe, before giving her another kiss. They both took out their phones and called their respective parents. Just last year, Sheena finally forgave Gunhee and allowed him to be her boyfriend again. What was surprisingly though was the moment Sheena forgave her, Kane also did. It looks like she already forgave him but decided to wait for her mother, Sheena, to decide. Anyway, as soon as they dialed their number, the first one to answer was obviously Hannah, Kenji's mother. Hey dear, why'd you call? Is there a paparazzi bothering you again? Hannah's voice sounded from the phone. Actually, no mom, I have something to tell both of you and dad. Can we meet at the house? Kenji replied. Okay, sure, me and your father are actually about to visit you. Is Kane with you? Hannah said before asking for Kane. Kenji turns around and saw that she's talking on her phone, so he said. Yes, mom, but she's a bit busy. Oh, okay, tell her that I'll be the one cooking this time. Kenji chuckled, ever since Kane became superwoman, her learning ability soared, and now she's probably a better cook than his mom. But unfortunately, Hannah took this as a challenge and whenever she has the chance, she'll compete with Kane in cooking. Although to Kenji, both of their cooking are good, and he actually doesn't need food, since he could just create it, and besides, his body doesn't require food to live. It's just out of habit that he's still eating food. Soon, after, Kane finally finished her call, and she turns to look at him, her face brimming with smile. So, are we going home now? When Kane asked this, Kenji smiled and replied, Not yet, babe, just one more thing. It should be here by now. Looking down at his Rolex watch, Kenji read the time and it's almost time for the last shock. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage. Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 3. CH 64. Since it was night time, it was the perfect moment for the fireworks to show their appeal. With them facing the front of the building, Kane saw a firework go up in the air before exploding, it then formed a series of words. If you're seeing this, Kane, then you must have accepted my proposal. Before Kane could react, another firework went up before exploding and forming another words. I just want you to know how much I love you. Once it faded out, this time countless fireworks with different colors went up before exploding loudly. Instead of words, an image shows up, showing Kane with her eyes closed, while Kenji was hugging her from behind, while a series of letters were beside them. Because of that, I created a song just for you. Once it faded out, guitar sounds started sounding behind her. When Kane turned back, she saw Kenji standing in front of her while fingering a guitar. Oh, her eyes, her eyes. Make the stars look like they're not churning. Her hair, her hair. Falls perfectly without her trying. She's so beautiful and I tell her every day. Kane just stared at him wide-eyed. She was shocked at hearing Kenji's beautiful voice. After all, she hasn't even heard him sing, and if he did sing, he only sings happy birthday or something like that. Yeah, I know, I know. When I compliment her, she won't believe me. And it's so, it's so. Sad to think that she don't see what I see. But every time she asks me, Do I look okay? I say, 
Kane started tearing up at the lyrics of the song, she felt like she was the luckiest woman in the world, even though there are still many girls out there, and she was lucky to be chosen by Kenji. When I see your face, there's not a thing that I would change. Cause you're amazing. Just the way you are. And when you smile, the whole world stops and stares for a while. Cause girl, you're amazing. Just the way you are. Yeah. And just like that, Kenji started singing a song from his previous life, Just the Way You Are, a song of Bruno Mars, Ellie's favorite singer. Even he started to like Bruno Mars's songs. After all, not only his voice is good, even his songs has contains emotions, unlike other songs that are full of craps. After three minutes, Kenji finally finished the song, and he was now being hugged by Kane while kissing him on his lips. He could even feel her uprising lust, bubbling within her. Is this the day? The day I'll finally lose my virginity? Kenji closed his eyes and said to his mind. HMMPHH, he was caught by surprise when Kane started touching his bulging pants and suddenly forced her way towards his mouth. Although I hate being dominated, but it's not that bad. Kenji just shrugged it off and decided to enjoy the kiss. For the next five minutes, they kept kissing before going home, by flying. They both really enjoyed flying together, as they felt free and nothing would stop them. After they arrived home, they both just cuddled on the couch while Kenji told her what his mom said earlier. Mom said she wanted to be the one to cook this time. Of course. I really like auntie's cooking. Kane immediately agreed and nodded her head. Kenji just chuckled at her reaction before telling her. Though don't forget to not call her auntie, okay? Remember what she did when you called her that. When Kenji said this, a flashback rang through her mind, as if she was remembering her time during WW2. The cold voice of Hannah, the creepy glare she has, and last but not the least, the pain she felt when Hannah playfully smacked her head. Why you're right, I shouldn't call her that. Kane gulped in fear before agreeing with him, while Kenji just sighed in relief. Ring. Oh. Looks like they're here. Kenji stand up and walk towards the front door before opening it. It reveals Hannah and Chikashi who are smiling happily. Hannah was the first one to step forward and hug her son. Because of the passage of time, both Chikashi and Hannah already has white hair on their heads, showing that they cannot escape the power of time and would soon grow very old. Not only they have white hair, but you can even see their oldness on their face as it shows wrinkles. Smack. You're thinking something bad, aren't you? It turns out it'd be his mother, Hannah who was squinting her eyes on him, as if she knew what was on his mind just now. And nothing, Mom. Kenji gulped and said. He didn't expect that even her mother has a woman's instinct, well obviously since she's a woman. While Chikashi was quietly laughing on the background. Chikashi was wearing glasses, as his vision was slowly blurring. Sometimes there are things that even magic can't solve. Even though Kenji has asked them if would they like to have immortality, and Kenji didn't expect them to say no. Although we would like to see you grow up into a fine man, but if it is time, then it is time, there's no need to stop the nature from taking its course. Was what the both of them said, which made Kenji tear up. Kenji knows that he's gonna be immortal, unless killed, and he wanted to have his parents by his side, but since they don't want to, then he'll have to respect their decisions. Luckily, Kane agreed to be immortal with him, much to Kenji's happiness. It looks like he won't be alone now. He'll have someone to join him in his journey. Soon, they all went inside and had a chat. Later on, the doorbell rang again. Ring. When Kenji opened the door, as he expected, it was Sheena and Gunhi, who was outside. Come in. Make yourself at home. He stepped aside and welcomed them. 
Once they have seated on the couch, both Kenji and Kane was in front of their parents, as if they were kids in the principal's office. Mom, Dad, Shina-san, and Go-san. Kenji called then and nodded at Kane, who in turn put her left hand upwards to show them the diamond ring. Both Shina and Hannah's mouth was left hanging open, while Chikashi on Hannah's side smiled happily. On Shina's side, Gogunhi was crying in years. He just became Kane's father again, but she already had to marry. He didn't even get the chance to fully adapt to her as a father, and now she's about to be taken by another man. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel 3. CH 65 Inside the living room, Hannah was excitedly chatting with Kane, along with Chikashi, while Shina and Gunhi was chatting Kenji, though the atmosphere is a bit heavy. Since when did this happen? Gunhi was the first one to ask, however, he was pinched on his leg by Shina who glared at him, as if telling him, let me take care of this. Gunhi just gulped and backed away. Shina stopped her glaring and turned to Kenji, and her previous glare turned into a soft and warm eyes. Kenji, you have grown mature. I still remember you when you were still a baby. I could still remember. And so, she started reminiscing about the past while Kenji just quietly listens. Since he needed her blessings, then it's only obvious that he should show her respect and wait for her to give him a thumbs up. Meanwhile, What are you gonna name your baby? What if it's a boy? Hannah was blabbering her mouth, asking so many questions to Kane, who was being overwhelmed. Aye. Kane stuttered. Meanwhile, Chikashi decided to stop Hannah by putting his hand on her shoulder. Dear, you can see that Kane is uncomfortable. How about slowing it down? He said to her, while Hannah finally noticed and stopped. Once they seated, Hannah calmly asked Kane about what happened and where did Kenji propose. Kane told her everything, including when Kenji sang a song just for her. Meanwhile, Hannah squealed like a teenage girl, before smacking Chikashi on his arms. See, even your son is more romantic than you, who just randomly proposed to me inside a dungeon. Hannah angrily said to him. Chikashi just scratched the back of his head, before chuckling in fun, remembering the times when he and Hannah was still a hunter. What she said was actually true, he did propose to her during one of their dungeon raids and almost got themselves killed because of it. But he didn't regret it that day, since when he was lying on the floor with his pool of blood, Hannah cried and immediately accepted his proposal. Turns out, he wasn't actually on the verge of death, since he just healed himself. Since that day, he didn't regret it one bit. Well, he's my son after all, he must have got it from me. Ha 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 ha. Chikashi said before laughing out loud. Hannah just pouted while Kenne just laughed awkwardly. In Kenji's side. Kenji himself is doing well, since he had known Sheena since he was a kid, and it wasn't that hard to get her blessings, of course with the conditions of not hurting Kenne, or he will take responsibility if he ever impregnated her. Of course, Kenji wholly accepted the conditions, after all, even without the conditions, he'll still take responsibility. Now, the only problem is Gunhi who was seriously staring at him. My beautiful wife may give her blessings, but I'm not that easy to be fooled. Gunhi seriously said, while leaning forward and placing his crossed fingers under his chin. Of course, Kenji already expected this, so he already prepared something just for him. 
I heard you wanted Kenny's bucket list that relates to her father so badly, right? Kenji smirked and said. Meanwhile, Gunhee's previous serious expression turned into something like he was expecting it from Kenji. Spill it out, boy. Gunhee told him. Kenji also leaned forward and whispered, but loud enough for Gunhee to hear. How about no? A cross popping vein appeared on Gunhee's head and was about to make Kenji spill it out. However, another glare from Sheena made it go away, and sat back down. Fine, you got me. You got my blessings. I only ask of you the same as my wife's condition. Just don't hurt her, please. Gunhee's expression softened, and he said to Kenji. Kenji smiled warmly, and nodded his head. It looks like his goal is accomplished. However, Gunhee continued. I want that bucket list in my email before morning. After saying that, he kissed his wife's lips before standing up and fixing his suit. I'm getting a bit hungry. Anyone's cooking? Kenji's face twitched. Looks like he needed to put Kenny to sleep tonight. Soon after, Hannah cooked their meals before it was finally night time. Their parents left soon, and it was only Kenji and Kane who was left alone on the room. Kane turned her head on Kenji and asked him, How did you convince my father? I bet it isn't that easy. Scratching his cheek, Kenji replied, Well, actually it is very easy. Easy? How so? Kane raised her eyebrow and asked, Is there something easy in getting the blessings of the father of a wife? I offered him your bucket list that involves him. Kenji smiled and replied, Bucket list? But I don't have one? Scratching the back of her head, Kane was confused. Exactly. I'm creating a bucket list that he thinks that you created when you were a child. Kenji clicked his tongue before pointing at his head. It's big brain time. And besides, he won't notice it since he thought that girls like you are making their bucket list since child. So, like I said, getting his approval is easy. Kenji went on and hugged her before kissing her on her lips. Anyway, I need to send it to him before the sun rises up. I'll just go to my office and create a bucket list. Oh, and before I forgot, perhaps you have something you might want to write on your bucket list? Kane seemed to stop for a second before opening her mouth. Just write down that I would try my best to make sure he never leaves me and mom again. Before walking away, specifically towards their bedroom. Kenji smiled and walked to his office before writing down the bucket list, including Kenny's request. Once he was done, he took a picture of it before emailing it to Gunhee. Outside their manor. Inside a speeding car, Gunhee who was driving his car, heard his phone ring, and when he took a look at it, he saw Kenji's email. He could already guess what is inside the mail, so he just focused on driving and decided to check it at home. After all, he should keep his eyes on the road. When his eyes turned to look at the person beside him, he saw Sheena asleep, while smiling happily. It looks like she was having a good dream. Then he smiled before he focused on the road. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read ten advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 3. CH66. Sung Jin Wu POV. If you disregard my slightly abnormal strength and regeneration, it's embarrassing to even call myself a hunter. Walking on the pedestrian line, I thought to myself. Inside a dungeon, I always got myself hurt and even had near death experiences. I still continued walking. The job where your life is on the line, the hunter. I'm not doing this because I like it. I barely pay my sick mother's medical bills with what the hunter's guild pays me. 
For a normal person with no particular talent, I had no choice but to become a hunter. Finally, I reached a construction site, where a gate was swirling inside. Why do I have to live this life? I sighed, one of the reason why I chose to become a hunter was because of my idol, Superman. I was saved by him back then, when me and my sister was almost kidnapped by child traffickers. Since my father died in an S-rank dungeon, and my mother who fell into an incurable disease that appeared when Gates appeared, eternal slumber. Yo! Son, you arrived! A man greeted me when I walked inside. It's cold out there, isn't it? Good job. Although the man looks like he was looking out for me, the mock in their eyes shows their true intentions. Almost everyone in this place mocked and gossiped about me behind my back. Haha, it's nothing. I'll be in your hands today, too. I laughed and replied. It's not like I could tell them to back off or something. After all, I was known as. Look, it's the world's weakest hunter. Yes, I'm the world's weakest hunter. I'm so weak that I almost died in an E-rank gate. Even newbie hunters could raid E-rank gates with just one or two scratches. I ignored everyone around me and finally arrived at the coffee shop. Hi, may I have a cup of coffee? Ah, uh, Hunter Sung Jin Woo. All the coffee ran out just now. Not even a coffee feels bad, man. After that, I turned around and heard the guy speak again, but I ignored what he's saying. Ah, uh, Jean Wu, you're hurt again. When I heard her voice, I smiled warmly. Unlike all this old geezers, Miss Juvie was the only one who truly cares about me. She's a beer and healer. Whenever I'm hurt inside the dungeon, she was always there to bring me back to my peak, and I also kinda like her. Third POV Another year has passed, and his marriage is almost near, as it is a few months away from now. Kenji was in the training room, practicing his powers, while at the same time, he was thinking a lot of things. I wonder if me and Kane had a child, will he she also inherit our powers? After all, the platinum kryptonite affects someone's DNA to give them kryptonian powers. Kenji with his hand on his chin, muttered silently. Ha, huh, a food for thought. He continued. So far, the rulers and monarchs has been quiet. It was as if they were planning something. This is why, Kenji was even training till now. He just wanted to be sure that he won't be defeated by both. After all, he just made enemies with the two sides, monarchs and the rulers, and he's gonna make sure he eliminated both sides. He doesn't want someone watching or controlling him, and his loved ones, he wanted to be free from both sides. With them alive, he felt like he was chained and acting according to their expectations. As Kenji was thinking about life and such, he suddenly felt something ringing in the back of his mind. What's happening? Kenji asked to himself. Sung Jin Wu POV. And my legs, it won't move? Miss Juhi fearfully said. What could go wrong? If only we didn't let curiosity get to us, then this'll never happen. These moving stones, it was as if we're fighting A rank monsters. It must be mana exhaustion. You use too much mana trying to heal, Mr. Sung. The leader of this expedition said, Mister, you should take Miss Juhi out of here. After a few seconds of contemplation, I finally said that. I said I would stay. Mr. Song tried to convince me. Then who will help Miss Juhi out of here? I retorted before continuing. There's no time. Go. I shouted. Mr. Song looked at me with reluctance while Miss Juhi was shocked. No! Jean Wu, I'd rather stay! She shouted at me. I promised to buy you dinner, didn't I? I said, while rummaging through my pocket and taking out my card. Eat it first. Then I offered it to her. 
I'll get my payment from you when I return. I continued. Julie was tearing up and shouted at me. This is no time for joke stash. However, Mr. Song struck her at the back of her neck, making her unconscious. Sorry, there isn't any time left. Mr. Song said, as he carried Ju He over his shoulders. Mr. Song, please take care of her. I sadly said. Yeah, I will. Mr. Song said for the last time before walking away. Thank God, at least I'm the only one dying. I mused to myself. I would have gotten myself an insurance if I knew this would happen. I chuckled to myself. When I looked to my side and saw a sword, I grabbed it and pointed it towards the giants. If I'm gonna die, then at least I'll take one with me. I said. Huff, come. With determination, I painfully said. However, the giants were too strong and before I could react, one of their spears was thrown on me and penetrated me from the insides. Gawkuk. Then the giant twisted his spear, throwing me on top of the altar. I don't want to die. I can't leave my sister and my mother at home. I still need to take my sister to watch his idol's movie, Superman. As I was lying on the cold floor, I thought to myself, Superman, I wish you could save me right now, but unfortunately, I'm already dying. I just wish I could see my family for the last time. As I was seeing the giant who was about to strike me for the last time, the blue flames that surrounded the altar went out, and the time seems to be halted. Then, something that I've only seen in games has appeared in front of my vision. Alarm. You have completed all the necessary requirements of the secret quest courage of the week. Ha! Huh. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read ten advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 3. CH 67. Third POV. What's this? Sung Jin Wu asked in confusion. What he's seeing is a translucent screen that can only be found on some games that he played on his free time. You have completed all the necessary requirements of the secret quest courage of the week. Secret quest? Completed all the requirements? Sung Jinwoo then heard a robotic voice talking to him. You have completed all the necessary requirements of the secret quest courage of the week. Wait, where is this sound even coming from? Jinwoo confusedly asked to himself. You have earned the right to become a player. Will you accept? Once again, he heard the same robotic voice talk to him. Earned? Except? What's going on? Sung Jin Wu's heart starts to beat faster, as it usually does to normal humans, as they fear the unknown. You do not have much time remaining. If you refuse, your heart will stop approximately 0.02 seconds later. Will you accept? Ah, right. I'm dying. Then if I accept then. I don't have to die. Yes. This chance, I'll take it. The moment Jean Wu said that, another translucent screen appeared bearing a different message. Welcome, player. The moment he read the message, he widened his eyes in surprise as a bright orange light engulfed him completely, before his vision darkened. While the light continued to lit, until it also engulfed the whole room, the room that traumatized and killed tens of people. Meanwhile, Kenji who was cooking breakfast suddenly felt a tug on his heart. It was as if someone was finally awakening. What was that feeling? Clutching his chest, Kenji muttered in confusion. He knew that something just happened, and this year would be interesting. I'll figure it out later, 
after I finish my cooking. Kenji muttered and resumed his cooking. If this year is interesting, then maybe because he's about to get married a few months later. The moment Jin Wu opened his eyes, his upper body immediately sprung up from the body, and his body was full of sweat. At the same time, he was clutching his chest. The pain from being penetrated by such a huge thing is still vivid in his mind, as could be seen when he was huffing heavily. W. Where am I? Jin Wu looked around and saw that he was in a hospital. A dream? Was it a dream? Jin Wu thought to himself as he looked down on his hands. A hospital, Jin Wu said to himself as he looked at the rising sun outside the window. He then heard the door open and two men walked inside. Just from the face of the other guy, Jin Wu could see the tiredness on his eyes. Are you finally awake now? The man asked. Who are you? Jin Wu asked back as he was handed a card by the man. I'm sorry if we surprised you. The man apologized as they both sat on the couch. The Korean Hunter Guild's inspectors. Jin Wu muttered before continuing. Why do the inspectors want to see me? Dash underscore dash underscore dash underscore dash underscore. I was asleep for three days. Jin Wu screamed in shock. What happened to Miss Juhi and Mr. Song Chiyo? Are they safe? Jin Wu worriedly asked. Yes, they're safe, but... The man said before continuing. Hunter Song Chiyo's missing arm will most likely impede his work from now on, so he may retire if he chooses to. Hunter Lee Juhi is still getting treated due to her extreme trauma. It's uncertain if they will stay as hunters. This time, the man's voice got sadder. After all, such precious hunters were reduced to such state, while the weakest who stayed got away with only a scratch. And other hunters like Kim sang -shik. The other man was about to continue when Jin Wu suddenly interrupted. No. It's fine, that's enough. Jin Wu muttered, but was still heard by the men's. Jin Wu could still remember what happened their despaired faces, faces that has lost all hope, the betrayal, and everything. The number of people that survived the double lair is six, the man said as he continued. Although hunters are in danger every time they hunt, it's rare for a massacre like this to occur. When the inspectors and the White Tiger Guild reached the scene, they were all gone. In that room, it was only you who was found lying on the altar. No statues or anything the others described were found. Jin Wu was shocked when he heard this. That can't be Dash. He tried to say something but he was cut off. We can't believe it either. If the survivors' testimonies had differed by even a little, or if some of the body parts of the deceased weren't found there, we would have thought of a different explanation. This is just our theory but... This time... The man leaned forward in seriousness. We believe that you may have received the double awakening. Double awakening? Jin Wu can't believe what he heard. Of course he has heard about the double awakening. It is about a hunter who awakened for the second time. There are even some cases like C-rank hunters shooting through the ranks of A-ranks or if possible, the S-rank. So far, almost all the S-rank hunters received double awakening with the exception of the world's strongest hunter, Akano Kenji, who was said to have awakened just as soon as he was born. This is the magic power detector. All you have to do is place your hand on the mana crystal. The man instructed. It's not impossible to not suspect Hunter Sung Jin Wu receiving the double awakening, seeing that he was the only survivor left inside. However, the moment the laid his eyes on the machine and saw the number of ten. I guess trash is trash through and through. Damn, even a normal E-rank hunter is at least at seventy. The man's sweat dropped. What's the result? Jin Wu can't wait any more and asked. If he really reawakened, then his life might change, and he could now provide more for his family. 
Looks like we suspected you for nothing. The man sighed as he stand and walked out, followed by the other guy. Damn nothing, huh? Jin Wu felt sad, and all his hopes earlier were crushed. But aren't those people aware of that? Jin Wu then raised his head just to see the same translucent screen earlier. Message You have unread email. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage. Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 2. CH-68 Third POV It's been a few months or so since Kenji last felt that tugging feeling inside his chest. Only a month away from his marriage, and he's currently inside an F-rank dungeon. Why, you ask? This is just one of his hobbies, becoming a false ranker. This is actually his strategy in recruiting the members in his guild. Since he doesn't want to recruit people who are already strong, he decided to haul members who are weak and are in need of money either to pay their bills or support their family. And no, he's not some kind of bad guy that takes advantage of someone who's in need of money. The reason for this was because he wanted them to do their best. When a man who's in need of money was offered with money, then it is only expected that they'll try their best to please those who would give them the money they need, and this is what Kenji wants. He doesn't like to recruit a rich and strong hunter who would only slack in his office and order weak members around. He wanted all his members to work hard for their dreams, and when they're strong enough to handle themselves, only then they'll be thankful to him for giving them a chance. It's not like he is manipulating them or something, He's just bringing out the best of the human's potential. Just like John Wick, he's about to take down an old and ancient organization like High Tables just to avenge his car and dog. Hey you, stop slacking your ass off and help us here! A man shouted from behind him, as he was seen slacking off. Kenji turns around and saw a buff man, who he believed while offering contracts earlier about money or something which Kenji didn't care. What? Kenji raised his eyebrow and asked. So far, he's been encountering peoples like this guy, who likes to order low-rank hunters around. Didn't I tell you to be in the front line? The man angrily shouted at him. You must be wondering how Kenji wasn't recognized, right? Well, behold, Superman's almighty glasses. With his creation ability, he managed to completely replicate Clark Kent's glasses. With this he could now go to low-rank dungeons with a different identity. You. Do you want to die? In this dungeon only I can protect you, and you need to cooperate properly. The man's saliva started coming out of his mouth. When Kenji encounters this kind of person, he just throws him off to the monsters. He knew that this man uses lower rank hunters to clear a dungeon while he sits back and commands. And to only that, he even gets the big share out of all the members in a party. Turning around and seeing a pack of goblins overwhelming the hunters. So far, he hasn't seen any qualified members. Are yo dash? The man was about to shout again when Kenji suddenly grabbed him by his shirt and threw the man in the pack of goblins. Garg! The man was shocked and cried in pain as he was sliced into pieces by the goblins. Meanwhile, the hunters who were fighting the goblins were shocked when they suddenly saw their leader jumping on the pack of goblins and dying painfully. When they turned around and saw no one, the noise of the goblins suddenly turned quiet, and when they turned their head back, instead of seeing the goblins, it was instead replaced by a sea of blood. Everything, including the walls, floors, and the ceilings, were covered in red blood as the metallic scent of blood 
spreads making some newbie hunters to puke their breakfast. As for Kenji, he was currently in the boss's side, and saw it was a goblin king, a D-rank monster. Rea Wur! The goblin king roared and tried to smack Kenji with his huge club. Tang! Instead of turning Kenji into paste, it just stopped at his shoulder, as Kenji looked at it curiously. Well, hap. Kenji silently breathed in and out, freezing the whole club, up into the arms of the Goblin King. Soon, the ice covered the Goblin King completely, not expecting to die too early before Kenji Sparta kicked the Goblin King, shattering it into pieces. Since Kenji was getting bored and was hungry for cuddle, he immediately left the dungeon. Caesar POV So, you finally found a vessel? Caesar, sitting in his throne made of stars, asked the being beside him. Not yet, he just started, and is still a newborn. A tall dark being with glowing purple eyes said. Sigh, then you should make him hurry up. I heard that the rulers discovered the portion of power of the absolute being in Kenji's body, and they're planning on allying with the destruction monarch to destroy him completely. Will they succeed? The Ashborn asked. Hearing what he said, Caesar smirked as he replied, Who knows? But they should be ready as I'm joining the side of Kenji. After all, I can't just leave an old friend behind. How about you? I don't know. With a slight pause, Ashborn replied. Third POV As Kenji was going back home, and Caesar and Ashborn was having a chat, a meeting was taking place in an unknown place. Ho, oh, so the rulers has decided to call me here for temporary alliance? Sitting in one of the tables was a man with a red hair and a goatee. In front of him are the familiar rulers who were just calmly staring at him. Of course, Antares wasn't alone. Behind him are the two other monarchs. The Iron Body Monarch and Yogimunt, the Monarch of Transfiguration. In the mortal world, the power of the absolute being has descended and is currently in possession of a mortal. This get the interest of Antares and the rest of the monarchs. After all, the absolute being is their creator, and hearing that his power is possessed by a mortal, they can't help but become greedy. Who? Antares asked. Akano Kenji, the vessel of the star monarch, Omega. The star monarch. Antares muttered. Of course he's familiar with him. He fought with him couple of millennia ago, and he lost. But since it is just a vessel of him, then there's a possibility that he haven't awakened the true power of Omega. Are we gonna do it now? Antares asked. No, but soon. We should wait for the Shadow Monarch to find his vessel, and only then we'll descend and kill the both of them. The leader of the rulers, the brightest fragment of brilliant light, said. Fine. And Teres nodded and stand up to leave, followed by Yogimut and the Iron Body Monarch. Soon there will be a big war, a very big war. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my P at Atreon to read ten advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage. Extra chapter every two hundred stones. 3. CH 69. As he got home, he saw that his parents along with Kenny's parents. Guys, what's going on? Kenji asked, as he landed on the ground. Oh, here you are. We're having a vacation in Korea. His mother, Hannah cheerfully said. Ah, uh, okay. Kenji scratched his cheek as he said. Come one. I already told our pilot to prepare the private jet, Chikashi said as he was already prepared. You guys do know that I could just carry you and fly there, right? Kenji said as he raised his eyebrow. No can do, young man, this will be our family bonding. 
Hannah told him as she was also already prepared. Kenji just sighed and also packed his things. Maybe he'll meet someone there interesting, and probably recruit him. Well, he'll just find out. Is everyone ready? Let's go, Chikashi said as he walked towards their limo. Kenji got close to Kane and whispered, Are you fine with this? Kane looked at him and kissed him on the cheek as she whispered back, Of course, before going inside the van. Kenji sighed again and went towards the limo. And so, for the next hour, they finally reached the airport. Skimming through the day, they finally arrived at the Korean airport, where they are welcomed by the Korean Hunters Association, led by an orange-haired man who goes by the name of Wu Jinchul. Welcome back, director. Jinchul respectfully said to Gunhee. Yo! Jinchul, looking better, I see. Gunhee greeted him, as he patted him on the back. Yes, I'm fine, though I hope you didn't give me all your piled-up works, just to have some vacation. Jinchul sighed, showing how tired he was. Well, I couldn't find a successor yet, so you'll temporarily take the responsibility of the director. Sigh, can I quit? No. All right, this way, please. After a moment of chatting, he stepped aside and let them in a car. The car drove as soon as they got in. They also went into sightseeing as the car drove in different places. Soon, they arrived at Gunhee's house. It's not that big nor small, just right. Nice home. Chikashi patted Gunhee's shoulder. Thanks. Gunhee replied. However, before they got in, they were interrupted by a muscular young man with spiky orange hair, orange eyes, pronounced canine teeth, and neatly trimmed sideburns. Hello there, I'm Beck Yunho, an S-rank hunter and the guild master of White Tiger Guild I've been a fan. Beck introduced himself as he bowed towards Kenji. Nice to meet you, Yunho-san, may I know why you're here? Of course, Kenji wasn't rude and also greeted him back. Ahem, nothing, I'm just here because I wanted to see you in person. Beck coughed slightly as he said. Really? Okay, sure come in. Kenji said as he came in, followed by the rest, and finally Beck as the last. Why do I feel like I am the guest? Behind Kenji, Gun he grumbled. As they went in, they dropped their luggages and sat on the couch, as they sighed. Meanwhile, Beck was fidgeting beside them like a little girl, confessing to his crush. What is it? Noticing Beck's dilemma, Kenji asked him. Well, actually, I just wanted to have a sore with you. Beck sighed and finally revealed his true purpose. You should have said that from the start. Let's go, Gunhee-san, do you have any place where we can spar? Kenji stood up and stretched before asking Gunhee. Gunhee seemed to think for a while before saying, There is one near the Korean Hunters Association's headquarters. Gunhee said before sending him the location via phone. Thanks. Kenji thanked him before nodding at Beck. But before going out, he went forward and kissed Kane on the lips, who immediately got beat red. We're in front of our parents! Kane whispered as she noticed the stares their parents are giving them. Do I look like I care? I'll kiss you whenever and wherever I want. Kenji smiled and gave her one last kiss before speeding up, as he grabbed Beck by the hem of his shirt. Whoa! Eh? Beck was about to shout in fear, when he felt like he was lifted off the ground, when he suddenly felt he touched the ground again. We're here. Kenji told him, as he opened the lights of the huge stadium. Fast, so fast that I couldn't even react. What a monster. This is what was currently ongoing on Beck's mind. A few seconds later, they were both standing on the middle of the stadium, facing each other. Are you ready? Kenji cracked his knuckles and said, Can I go back? Beck said wearily, just the speed of Kenji, shows that he has no chance winning this. No can do. And besides, I also wanted to have a spar, 
It's been a day since I last fought. Kenji then cracked his neck as Beck gulped loudly. I hope I could get out of here alive. Beck muttered as he decided to go all out. His hair turns white as fur covered his whole body, just like the monarch of beasts. His body buffed up as his face growled and changed into something akin to an angry lion. Gur, Beck growled then suddenly attacked Kenji, with his claws stretched out. Kenji meticulously dodged every single slash of his, before countering with a knee on Beck's abdomen, throwing him away. Boom! Beck collided with the walls, as he coughed blood, while his abdomen has sunk, but was healing fast. Roar! Beck once again, roared and attacked Kenji with perfect skills and precision. You're strong, I give you that. Kenji told him, as he let one of his claws touch him. Bang! Instead of injuring Kenji, Beck's claws got stuck on Kenji's shoulder. My turn! Kenji said, as he flicked on Beck's chest, before delivering a punch on his jaw. Boom! Boom! Beck felt his consciousness slipping away, as his leg was grabbed by Kenji before he was smashed on the floor, forming a crater. Cough! Cough! Beck coughed up blood as he tried to stand up, but because of the impact earlier, his bones were broken and his ribs were crushed. Oh man, we're late. They suddenly heard a mocking voice on the entrance of the stadium. When Beck turned his head and saw a familiar rival, he gritted his teeth in anger. Choi! Beck growled. You look like shit, Beck. Choi continued to mock him. Meanwhile, behind him was a lady with a handkerchief on her hand that is placed on her mouth. Cha Heian. Beck stated the name of the girl. Behind Heian was a burly middle-aged man with bushy black hair, thick eyebrows, and sloppy facial hair, while smiling happily. Good to see you, Beck. The burly man greeted him. So I heard that you were about to have a spar with the legendary Superman, and from what I can see, it's not even called a fight. Choi chuckled. If only I'm not in this state, I'll wipe that smirk off your face with my claws. Beck growled at him. Meanwhile, Kenji noticed that Beck was too injured for too long, so he decided to help him. Here. Kenji conjured a green bean and threw it towards him. Beck raised his hand and catched it. When he opened his hand and saw a green bean, he frowned. Eat it. Kenji told him. Of course, Beck ate it. After all, if Kenji wants to kill poison him, then he won't need to resort to this kind of method. The moment Beck placed the bean on his mouth and chewed, he instantly felt his stamina and mana recovering rapidly, while at the same time, his body healed, and even his broken bones and ribs quickly regenerated. What was that? Choi frowned especially when he felt Beck's mana recovering rapidly until it reaches its capacity. It's an invention of mine. I called it Senza Bean. It could recover a person's physical, mental, and magical state up to their prime even if it is a hidden injury. Kenji explained to them, shocking everyone. So, what do you guys think of my invention? Kenji asked. T this is. This is a national treasure. This sense of beans could save countless lives inside a dungeon. Choi was wide-eyed and screamed. The others also has the same reaction, though not as exaggerated as Choi. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Patreon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage Extra chapter every 200 stones in web novel. 3. CH70 Next. Really? Kenji smiled. Looks like he has another way to make more money. 
I'm thinking of selling these. What do you guys think? Kenji then brought a small bag of senza beans. T there's more? Everyone yelled in their minds. K Kenji, H how much for a single bag? Beck stood and seriously said. This sense of beans could potentially decrease the death rate of hunters inside the dungeons by a very large margin. If he could get his hands on this, then he could perhaps increase the rank of his guild. Hmm. How about a million dollar per bean? Kenji thought for a while before stating the price. Then, how many are there in a single bag? Although Beck felt like he couldn't afford a bag, but he still asked. Twenty pieces per bag. Kenji said. Twenty million dollars. Everyone muttered in their mind. Isn't it a bit too expensive, Kenji? Choi pushed the rim of his glasses and said. Well, it is. But if not for the fact that it could also cure eternal slumber, then the price might be as low as you expected. Kenji shrugged, not knowing that he dropped another bomb once again. Hey, are you sure? Beck's eyes widened as he gulped. Well, I haven't tested it yet. Would you like to try? I heard that there are also some victims of eternal slumber here. Kenji said. There is. I'll find someone now. Choi was about to make a phone call when he was stopped by Kenji. No need, I already messaged Gunhee and he said that he's looking for one now. Kenji told them, as he walked towards the entrance followed by the other. Ding! Hearing his phone ring, Kenji pulled it out of his pocket and read the message. Let's go, he found one near here. After receiving the coordinates, Kenji then flew away flying to the coordinates that he received. Park Kyunghai. Kenji muttered the name of the patient that he supposed to cure using his sense of being. Soon, he finally arrived and walked in front of the desk. May I ask, where is the room of Park Kyunghai? Are you a family or a friend? The nurse asked as she was tending to some papers. A friend. Kenji answered. The nurse then raised her head and when she saw Kenji, she was about to squeal in delight. However, Kenji was faster and immediately put his hand on her mouth, while gesturing her to not scream. I'm just here to see this patient, P- Dash. Kenji was about to say, however, he was interrupted. Ah, uh, Kenji! You're here, Director Gun, he just called me to bring you to Park Kyung Hai. A doctor called out to him and gestured Kenji to follow him. Meanwhile, Kenji just nodded at the nurse and followed the doctor. I've already called the patient's family, and they're on their way now. The doctor explained as they arrived on the room. In there, Kenji was shocked when he saw his parents and Kane waiting for him. What are you guys doing here? Kenji asked. Well, Gunhee told us and now we're here. Kane said as she walked up to him before kissing him on the lips. I heard about your miracle cure. Are you sure it will work? We just gave someone hope, and it leaves a bad taste in my mouth if it didn't work. Kane said worriedly. Don't worry, I got this. Kenji assured her, and then heard the door opening. You um, are you guys the one who called us? It reveals a slightly skinny boy and a beautiful girl. Yes, that's us. Kenji nodded and said, Why you are? The girl gasped in shock as she pointed her finger at Kenji. You know me? Kenji asked. Is there someone who doesn't know you? You're a Kano Kenji. The girl squealed in delight as she held her hand forward, looking for a handshake. I'm some Jaina. I'm a huge fan of you. Sung Jaina introduced herself. Kenji shook her hand and said, Well, you already know me. I'm Akano Kenji. Oh, and this is my brother, Sung Jin Wu. She then pushed her brother forward before introducing him. H. Hi. Jin Wu awkwardly greet. Kenji nodded at him before explaining the sense of being. This right here 
is called Senza Bean. It was invented by me, of course, and we decided to use it to your mother, and don't worry, it won't harm her or something. As Kenji introduced the Senza Bean, he noticed that both siblings panicked when they heard that their mother was the first one to try, so Kenji immediately assured them. T then, we'll trust you to cure our mom! Jaina said and bowed her head, followed by her brother. Please, no need to bow. Kenji smiled and forced them to stand straight. We were just waiting for the both of you, so with you here, we'll proceed now. After that, Kenji carefully placed the Senza bean on Kyung Hai's mouth before helping her jaw to swallow it. Once it was swallowed, they waited, and for the next ten seconds of waiting, everyone in the room was waiting for a miracle. While the siblings was about to despair and lose hope, when suddenly, their mother's fingers slowly twitched. Both of them were wide-eyed, and it only intensified when Kyung Hai's eyes slowly opened as she finally speak her first words since she slept. W where am I? Kyung Hai muttered as she tried to look to her side. In there, she saw Jin Wu and Jin Ah crying as they both hugged her. W what happened? Kyung Hai tried to assess the situation, however, all she remembers was falling asleep. And when she woke up, not only is she in an unfamiliar place, but she was also hugged by someone who looked like her children but looks much older. Meanwhile, Kenji just grabbed Kane and his parents outside so the family could have their reunion. Once outside, Shikashi faced him with a serious face. Kenji, do you know what you have just done? Shikashi said. What? Did I do something wrong? Kenji frowned and asked. No, what you just did was to help a pair of siblings reunite with their loved one. I'm very proud of you. He then hugged him, as Kenji hugged him back. Thanks, Dad. Kenji thanked him. Dash underscore 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 dash underscore. You can visit my Treon to read 10 advanced chapters and if you want to support me. www.patreon.com slash slimesage. Extra chapter every 200 stones. Six.